Good evening and welcome to your Friday night fling here at the Moda Super Series where by the end of proceedings tonight we are going to know our full six finalists when it comes to week two of series four. Well we concluded group C earlier on this afternoon and I did it in the company in the commentary box of Glenn Dowant, the three-time Lakeside chairman, the former Premier League winner and it was a group quite simply Glenn dominated by Don Taylor. Yeah, I think once again, Motor Super Series has unearthed a, a real talent in Dom Taylor. He's doing things away from here, of course, but you know, when you when you get and see someone so close and get to know them, and he's a real super potential superstar. And I had a little chat with him afterwards, and he was a dear. And 18 points out of 20 in that group was a big, big statement. It was Walters who made the run for the line, snatching that second place position. And it could be very interesting that he did that, because usually we'd dominate a group, but this time I mean, he came out the pack right at the end, and he's one of them players, Scott Walters, who could be very dangerous come Saturday night. As for Scott Walters, as you mentioned, he kind of usually plays Group B in this competition format, but change of group no change in fortunes. No, he's a big, big scorer. If he gets them 180s going and he complements that with some good finish, and like I said, it's, going to be, it's already looking very tasty Saturday night and uh, he'll be right in the mix. So that's Group C. That concluded earlier on this afternoon. Tonight, it's all about Group B and this is how the first session went. Well, Sam Kankit and Chaz Barstow both find themselves on two points following their opening night affairs. But Sam Kankit, he had some moments of brilliance on his opening evening, but will be looking for a little bit more consistency when we head into day two. As for Barstow, regular here at the Super Seas and a regular when it comes to Saturday nights in this competition, he is going to have to kick on day two if he's going to make a return. As for Reese Robinson, he made a positive start to the evening, but four points is all he could muster in the end. As for Jeremy Fagg, he won the final game of the session against Robinson to join him on four. He also nailed his big fish against Sam Kanki. Meanwhile, Robert Thornton had the perfect night here at the Super Series yesterday and is in touching distance already on finals night. Well, that is what we saw last night. Glenn Durant was watching it and Robert Thornton, top of the lot, top of the pile, but still feels he's got gears to go. Yeah, we're waiting for him, and once again, he's on the upward trajectory. Uh, we expected big things in Group A. Didn't, you know, really happen, materialise, uh, but he showed his quality once again. You'd like to think it's another couple of gears, which uh, he had a little bit of scary for for the other players, but it was a quality night Group B, um, one of the best uh, groups I've been involved in. Well, let's have a look at the table then, following the first night's affairs in Group B. As I say, Thornton leading the way. Jeremy Fagg, Reese and both find themselves on four points, but positions two and three could be a right jostle tonight. Yeah, and look at game one tonight. You know, sometimes you look down that timetable and that opening one for me smacks that the winner of that one will have one foot also in finals. Now, Jeremy Fagg versus Reese Robinson, what a way to start the night. It is going to be some way to start the night. We'll talk about that a little bit more in just a second. But before that, let's have a look and see what happened last night numerically as far as Group B was concerned. This is by the numbers. We saw 60 legs played, 26 breaks of throw with a big fish from Jeremy Fagg, a 10 dart from Reese Robinson, and the bottom two, the overall average, 89.85, overall checkout, 34.68. Yeah, there's a couple of things. That, I mean, the total 180 is 28 because there's reduced numbers, reduced games. Yeah, I mean, Reese Robinson had six in one game, but yeah, the bottom stat once again, just shy of 90 average. That used to be an old money, the benchmark to be one of the elite players. It was an exceptional night and fully expect the same again. Six 180s in a game, one of only nine players to have done exactly that. But let's look ahead to tonight's action here in Group B and see what the bookmakers make of this evening's action. They have Robert Thornton, perhaps unsurprisingly, considering his first night form as a heavy favourite to win the group. Yeah, rightly so. Eight points out of eight, and uh, yeah, has he has he reached maximum gear as well? So he is going to be a big, big favourite. But if you're looking for odds, like I said, it's just picking the winner. 50-50 split between Jeremy Fagg and Reese Robinson at the top. That's where your value could be. 
18 plus, BeGambleAware.org. Let's have a look at Duzz's tips before we get underway here this evening. It's a just under 11 to 1 treble this evening. Glenn, just talk us through a couple of those selections. Yeah, lots more 180s tonight. Jeremy Fagg against Reese Robinson. I'm looking for three 180s in that game. Most 180s, Reese Robinson. That's six. Did swear my decision there. And, and then the final one, Barstow against Can't Get. A little handicap bet. And I think Chaz Barstow will come to the party tonight. And does his tips needs a bit of a selection booster, doesn't it, after this week? Why, why mention that? In other words, don't follow them. <laughs> don't do it. Anyway, game one of our evening sees Reese Robinson in action. He takes on Jeremy Fagg. It's the reverse of the final fixture last night. Glenn Dunham's going to make his way down to the commentary box to describe all the action in the company. Chris Murphy. Hello, Chris. Hello, Henry. Hello, everybody. And welcome along to the final in this group and the final places at finals night Jeremy Fagg hoping to claim one of them Robert Thornton as good as has but Reese Robinson might be the dark horse in this group as the boys were saying on the balcony whoever wins this match is in a very good position to maybe force it into a race between three for one spot in the loser of this Chaz Barstow and Sam Kankit but Jezza the 44 year old from Brisbane Australia looking to get a victory over Humberside's Challenge 2 event winner. 31 now, Reese Robinson. He's produced some highlights in his time here at the First leg, Jeremy Super Series, including testing our Game referees off. and spotters with finishes like Bull 18 Bull. Can he test Jeremy Fagg in this opening match? A match that Glenn Duran has identified as possibly the most important match of the night. 46. Yeah, when it comes to the final session of a group, you're looking at the bottom games and how exciting the finale could be, but this one really stood out for me because I'm assuming and presuming that Robert 95. Thornton will be qualifying tonight. One win, I think, will be sufficient for him, so you fully expect that. And you want that early move. With Reese Robinson, you're not 100% sure what you're going to get. He's got the, the sublime with 6-180s in him, but he's also got a real C game. That can just be... Nowhere near his very best, whereas Jeremy Fagg, one of his strengths, Chris, for me, he's very, very consistent. Yeah, Robert Thornton plays the second game of 16. the evening against Sam Kankit, the Welshman outsider in this group. And if a Thorn wins that, he will secure the fourth spot of finals night on Saturday. There are tickets available. Do make sure you head across to dartshop.tv to get yours. It will be a great atmosphere. And there are some great players already through. It should be a good night. Mike Warburton, Scott Walters and Dom Taylor. 119. Yeah, what's interesting about every one of them players, they've, they can produce the magic as well. I think with a guy that's in your picture right now, I think, I think we know what we're going to get with Jeremy. But reading his social media, a lot of his friends and family think there's still... That, that have to boost the put on as well. I think there's more levels to his game. And uh, yeah, very good. 190. Jeremy for 126. Here we go. On the ball. 101. And how many times Three has Jeremy Fagg gone 47. for 126 this week? Is it a three times already? Let's see if Reese Robinson, the, the mood tonight. Two darts, a double 16 already. A big moment in this Game match. On the first leg. Just kisses Robinson. off that second dart. And that little fist pump tells you exactly how he feels about that because every break of throw, every leg could be very, very important tonight. Two big, big second points. Leg to throw and first. I think both identified Game off. very early when they walked in and seen the list that this was a game they really wanted to win. Beautiful. Beautiful start. 130. But only the 135. Disappointed at a 135. Remember those days, does it? Yeah, the trebles are a bit smaller when I was good, remember. I was talking in the previous 96. leg about booking tickets for finals night. We would love to have you here at the Super Series. And if you do want to be here, you can scan that QR code right now. Get your phone out, your device. It'll take you to the ticket page. Just a couple of pounds booking fee. And you can see what well, the likes of those players I mentioned and, in all likelihood, the legend that is Robert Thornton on Saturday at the Super Series in Portsmouth. 140. Jeremy's uh, 
Jeremy's darts are sitting very, very nicely there. He'd probably come for the 19s himself when he comes back on 265. Very focused. A real desire to get there on Saturday night. I've liked watching him this week. 98. Watching him grow. That incredible disappointment of not getting through group A by just that one leg. But he took it on the chin. He was determined to get through this very, very tough group B. Oh, yeah, this was, of course, the last Jerry match of last night. He won it 4 0. So Robinson's already done better than he did yesterday in this fixture. But remember the rule of Jeremy Fagg. First match gets beat. Happened every single seven. session this week. Or is your it's absolutely unbelievable. 86. For a second there, I'd forgot about it. I'm just wondering if it's on his mind as well because. You'd want Reese Robinson a little bit later in the night looking at the stats as he looks at the ball. 54. Well, it's worked out okay in the end, provided that Bag doesn't finish 110. Seen a couple of 110 in this group again last night, but we won't with darts like that. And immediately seeing the disappointment in that big three is just a conclusion from that first dart. They'd be Reece very disappointed 32. with that. Just takes the pressure off this 32. You'd expect Reese to go 2 and a up from here. Well, he'll do a double-double. Oh, double-four then. He can't believe that's not in. He's still got his arm out. The full plumage from Reese Robinson. He's looking again. Checking. Don't don't doubt our referee, Reese. He's always right. And you've Robinson. got that right in the end. What a fabulous double-four. That's for many reasons. He was begging for that second double eight to go and he was asking the Greg referee just say it's in Rovers. but he adjusted Came very on. very well that tr tr transition from the eight to the four is one that dart players like just on the right eye line that double four and that's a real big moment for reese robinson he needs to kick on from here but he's oh, in a great great 40. position it might be about to reverse the result completely whitewashed by jezza at the end of last night might be about to dish out a dose of his own 100. medicine as we see Jeremy Fagg in all his glory. Having to shuffle around the hockey in this visit, Glenn. Yeah, it's a great it's side view. Like you say, very interesting with Jess's throw, the way he sort of comes back with the dart as well as head, whereas Reese is very. So Reese walks on the third. As you can see. Just with that sign in the background, he's virtually walking with that last dart, but. What's really unique with this one is just watch that head, that nose. Watch you go backwards as the dart goes back. But it all works in symmetry. Exactly what we want it to do. But just watch the way it races. Just look at that little Y behind. The nose is right on it. And just watch him as he shuffles across. And he'll be virtually on the tee by the time he throws that third one. Jeremy Rohr, 106. Ace analysis from man who knows what he's talking about in Glen Durant. Well spotted, and, and that can affect things sometimes, can't it? Because every dart really should be thrown no, the same. Well, won't. you want to keep it very simple. You don't want things to go wrong. So when you bring body movement in as well, you've got to try and adapt to that. So quite simply, if you can stand still, musical statues for three darts, 83. just let the mechanics of the arm do the job. 70. I promise you it makes it much easier. Well, it's musical chairs here at the Super Series. Who will be left without one when the music stops in this group? It might be Jeremy Fagg because this is a, a bad match to lose. Yeah, Robert Thornton had a couple of 110 finishes late last night. And Reese Robinson replicate that. Game that is a simply Reece stunning Robinson. finish. Just look what Jeremy Fagg was left with there. Double 10. They're the kind of movements. They're the kind of levels that you need to reach the upper echelons in this game. This is a Robert. really strong Group B. Reese Robinson didn't really get all the headlines. Wasn't nominated as someone who we confident was going to go through. But when he's on it, he's very good. It's how he sustains that over the next couple of hours. 57. Right, fans of Fag, cover your ears now, because I'm going to have to run through this. Jeremy Fag's first game of the week, 3-0 up against Robert Thornton, lost 4-3. First game on 97. Tuesday, lost 4-1 to Mike Warburton. First game on Wednesday, 
lost 4-3 to Mark Barilli. And first game last night, lost 4-3 to Sam Kankit from a 3-1 leading 100. position. Yeah, it's a bizarre statistic, but... And no reason. I, I can I sometimes sit here while I'm just getting prepared for the session, and he's one of them big practices on that stage, oh, and he's producing darts no, like that. No, easy. So he prepares well. There's nothing I'd really advise him to do anything different. It's just, it's just a strange statistic. And he's 3 0 down, just about an average of 97 and change in this one. But this leg's just a reminder for Reese that he won't be able to just stroll to the finish line. Once again, three one eight twos. We saw twenty eight in this group last night. Basically, won every other leg. This is won every leg on average in this match. Sixty. Jeremy require one hundred and sixty. He just looks a little bit more refreshed as well, Reese today. I thought he looked a little tired whether he travelled on the day yesterday, but it looks like he's up for the challenge today. And for Jeremy, I feel like a treble's required because the way Reese is playing, two two six and six starts is a real possibility. Looking at seventeens, probably 56. here. Jeremy Leaves requires himself 62. the fish just in case Fag doesn't complete this, and he has. Missed both darts that double he's had in this match so far. Twenty two. Make that three. Please you require one hundred and seventy. What a way to end the match. He's averaging better than what he is, and that is sitting absolutely perfect. What a conclusion. One hundred and forty five. That would have been the cherry. Jeremy and the Reese Robinson kick. 40. And can Fag stay in the fight? Double ten. Game shot on the fourth leg. Jeremy in Fag. It goes. And Jeremy Fag just gives a little tap on the shoulder. Remember, Reese has had that match dart, albeit at the bullseye like for a fanfare finish. Well, is he Game finally going to break his first match hoodoo by. Coming back from three legs down. Yeah, and look back to Monday morning when he played Robert Thornton his first game, 3 0 up. Karma is fantastic sometimes, 81. and if he can end it with his final one in the round robin stage, coming down from 3 0, that's what he's got to keep telling himself. And the Aussie mentality, which I've spoken a lot Mighty. about this week, he won't be given up by a long stretch. And don't forget, finals night, it's a very different scenario. It's only three players in a group, so losing your first match can be an absolute disaster. Once that habit out of his system before 100. then, if he gets there. Yeah, we've seen a couple of games late in Group C. Yes, it was reminiscent of a Saturday night where it's no longer around Robin, no longer searching for points. This is It's really cutthroat. 100. And it's a win or bust sometimes on a Saturday night. And I think that suits the real flair players like a Scott Walters, like a Reese Robinson. Well, stubbornly stayed there, but now he's decided to move away. 97. Great effect. Maybe a dart too late there, Jezza. No panic in the Reese Robinson yet. Usually he will show you his emotions. I think Reese Robinson has 60. been criticised, certainly by me over the years, because he's one talented individual, but can show petulance. Can throw the dummy out the pram a little sometimes, but I'm a... Big, big fan. I, I like Reese, But he's just, again, he's just at that crossroads. What does he want to do with his career? Because the talent is there. Yeah, it was once. 41. The next big thing. Jeremy require one. This would be a big thing. Only well, if he fancies it. We'll never know. Might still utilise the bullseye in this visit. No need now. 94. He's had a tour card twice as race. The R R qualified in 2019. He beat me in the in the final and made me go to the final 135. day. 135. He has won three PDC 70. titles on the second tier, Dev Tour and Challenge Tour. Double eight. Sixty. Fifty. 
54. Well, this could be it. That could be that. The easy requires 70. Bag has faltered. And now Robinson can wrap up what could be a sugar sweet victory. And an all important one as well. 55. Another match start goes begging. Jeremy requires 16. I think he just felt he snatched at that one. That fake throw at the end. Sacco hasn't had an awful lot of luck. He might be thinking he's got a chance here. He can keep nibbling away. And that's good what he's doing now. Just resetting himself. One dart, double four. Game shot of the fifth and leg. And a big part Jeremy of the reason that one, he didn't panic. Composure is the word I would use on that one. He just didn't like that second dart. But he didn't panic and just throw that. I think John Desmero a few times this week was just throwing darts. Yeah, when he sort of stood back, just as Jeremy did there to went in, he's really back in this game now because Reese will be thinking. He heard us talking about Reese's potential many years ago. He actually won the World Masters Boys in 2010 when he was just an 18 year old kid in his home city of Hull, actually. The tournament was played. And the, the names that were in it along the way, the likes of Roby John Rodriguez, Josh Payne, players have gone on to do fabulous things. Uh, some of them doing them right now in PDC darts. 44. Max Hopp, another one. Dimitri Vandenberg, who of course won the Premier League last night, getting one to his name. Yeah, sometimes you just need the right people oh, around you, make the right decisions. One. He's had the talent. He's got the talent. One of our referees here at the Motor Super Series played in that. World Masters boys as well. Paul Hinks. No, not Paul Hinks. <laughs> it was uh, Justin Bradshaw. You may have seen him this afternoon. Very talented darts player himself. 140. This is looking like 3-3. Three, three. What an incredible turnaround. The only thing I would say, I don't want to be a spoiler for Jamie Fagg. He said he has lost quite a few 4-3s this week. Another 180, just out of nowhere. It really dried up. And look, it's a wayward one from Fagg. And Reese Robinson might get another match start. He's, a, he's missed one at the bolt. And he's missed one at tops. Need to treble to get another. Just look what double Jeremy's left. He knows he can get that, so. Oh, my. Well, that now's not the time, Reese. Now 80. is not the time. Oh, my. I can't believe Jeremy it. Jeremy, you're eight. You talk about talent. I'm not going to drill him while he's down if he thinks that's the right way to go. Mercurial talent. There's a fine line between genius and madness, but I know which one I think that was. And it means that Fag has made it 3-3 and has the darts in the decider. Reese Robinson, what have you done? Seventh and final leg, Jeremy, to throw first. He made a bad decision, is what he did. We saw it this afternoon, didn't we? Tom Taylor attempted it, but that was in a game against Andy Jenkins where there was nothing on the line. Taylor was through, Jenkins was out. Rocky himself hit the bullseye with one dart, didn't he? With 50 left. But I think it's well in order then. But Robinson to try that at that point of the match. Utterly bizarre. I still didn't like that. But boring, boring does her I am. 125. Just when Jeremy Fagg was taking over these 4-3 losses that he's had. He opens up with 37. But also, Glenn, I know you, know, you wouldn't have done such a thing. If you are going to go that route, you don't have to attack it like that. If he goes below the tops, is the shot still on? I was pulling my hair out. It's just... It's a stupid decision. 121. Well, you say it like it is, Glenn. Why not? I mean, what you know, I'll praise Reese Robinson. I'll tell him he's one of the best talented players I've ever seen. But talent's 50%. Sometimes you need... You know, people laugh at Dimitri Vandenberg. He's worked so hard. Some people say he crossed the boundary with all this yin and yang stuff, but he was he worked on it. He's... And imagine if Reese Robinson just had a, just a little bit more. Mm. You want no, flair. You don't. You know, not everyone is born and born in me. I get that. But in that situation, there, Shanghai is so gettable. Get up the stage. You're pretty much one foot in on Saturday night. 
Hey, we are assuming he did go for top. He might have just missed the treble 20 by a long way. 123. Race your wire 158. Right, 54 54 ball, is it? No, he has gone the right way. That's the way, Reese. Can't find it. He might get away with that maverick move. Jeremy Rohr, 153. That is the talent. That is Reese Robinson. How many 4-3s is Jeremy Fagg going to lose in his first game of the week? 59. Reese Rohr, Well, all 24. the hard work from 3-0 behind might count for now here. It's after 12. Shot. Robinson Hello, gets Reece double 12. Robinson. And in doing so, gets over the line and puts himself in a very healthy position to try and qualify from this group. Just a couple of points behind Robert Thornton, but crucially, four clear now of fourth and fifth place, Chaz Barstow and Sam Kanker. You see there, another 180 fest four in that match. 110 checkout for Reese Robinson, who tried and failed to hit three tops, but did win the match in the end. Next up, Robert Thornton. If he beats Sam Kanker, he will be through to finals night.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series. Where before the break, Rhys Robinson got the better of Jeremy Fagg by four legs to three. That me now means five days where Jeremy Fagg has lost his opening game. Well, next up for us, San Kankits in action. He takes on Robert Thornton. A victory for the Fawn will be good enough to see him into tomorrow night. Watching this one in the commentary box, here's Chris and here's Glenn. Thank you so much, Henry. That yeah, was a big win for Robert Thornton. Last night against Sam, the penultimate game of the night. Sam Kanker's strength and what he can use in defence for this game is he came out the traps very, very nicely yesterday. Won his opening game, but just didn't kick on from there. It's a, a tough group. I was looking forward to seeing Sam and watching him play. He's a Welsh international. He'll be in Ireland next month for the Six Nations representing Wales. Alongside some very, very good Welsh players. Good friends with a, a Nick Kenny, someone who I'm First a big fan of. And throw first. Just sort of got a little Game bit too on. much for Sam yesterday. And you just feel it has to start right now. And you just see a very relaxed Robert Thornton in the background there. He just looks good in the players' area. I'm just sort of no, looking at his body six. language as I went through. I think he was delighted, of course, with those eight points. And will play a big part in tomorrow night, you feel. Yeah, first one in. Robert Thornton no, preparing, practising. And that's interesting as well, isn't it? A man who... Look, he's as good as through before a dart's thrown. Still coming here, getting his preparation right. He's been doing this too long to take anything for granted. Yeah, probably a lot of dart players are pretty religious 100. and robotic on what they do. I used to like three hours and uh, would never throw a dart for the first half hour. But Mensa Sulevich, Michael Smith, they don't Feet sit down. Eight. They'll walk behind scenes and they're four hours non-stop. Is any of those sort of annoying players who just rock up half an hour before and then go and still average in three figures? Only the one. That's Christoph Ritachki. He walks in with his energy bar, his satchel on his own in the not. corner. No friends with him, no family. Just stands in the corner, goes off 111 average and puts his bag back on and he's in his hotel. So he's the, the only one who rocks up very, very late. And that is Poland's premier player, Christoph Ratajski. Right now, a battle between Wales and Scotland. And we were talking a little bit about, about the angle of Sam Kankit's darts. They do stand up an awful eight. lot and it can cause all sorts of problems. Yeah, it's a very long dart. And I'm not 100% sure it suits him. I I'm not convinced, should I say. I mean, there's so much technology out there with darts no, now. With long, short points, fat barrel, thin barrel, standard flights, pair, long point. I mean, you look at the stems from Luke Humphreys now. Well, that's the best camera to assess. But what I would say with that angle, they're sitting absolutely oh, perfectly. A little bit like an aeroplane at landing. 49. A lot of the work's done in that last couple of inches. Yeah, just can't afford a low dart, can he? Robert Thornton, what about this? But he was mustered on that double last night, wasn't he? 16. Samuel Aguirre, 48. You don't often see him go over the 16s, but he just did not miss it last night. But can't get big target, the 16 or the 8. Two darts, a double 16. These have to go. And we 16. talked about nice angles of his darts going in. Robert Rohwire, 16. And darts a double 16. And it's just, he could just do with something behind him. And and the first leg, you don't give Thornton. chances to Robert Thornton. But he just feels a little lethargic around the board. I would like a bit of um from him. He could watch Robert Thornton and Second watch a Reese Robinson. He's just Game so up. laid back his Sam there. I'd just like to say a little different of a dimension to what I seen last night. And a... A little bit of aggression added to his game. 140. Bit of zip in those darts from Robert Thornton, as always. Would like to get it wrapped up here, I'm sure. Faces Jeremy Fagg next. And that is a tough... 85. Second game for Fagg, having lost his first. They see the flight of the thorn. Even though his darts don't stand up as much, that dart was a problem for him, which is why he switched. 134. I kind of hope that Kanka... Throws one low here because it really tells a story. But now that's perfect, isn't it, for him? It's the perfect dart. You fully expect this to go in for 100. And 16. something I promote that first dart roundabout there because I, I assure you when you are playing darts and you're aiming roundabout that area, they'll drop in with nerves, tension, Ooh, anxiety. So that's where you should be. When you fire a dart at treble 20, I promise you, you will go low unless you're in that zone. We're starting to find a bit of range here, Kankit, but the problem oh, is he's running to the best player in the group, playing decent darts. 
And that's why the frustration of them two missed out to double 16. You don't get them chances against the best hey, senior you know in the world at the moment. He's, for me, he's as good as when I last saw him on the pro tour. We didn't go to Q school out of respect to trying to win back and retaining his world seniors, which he did. Well, there we see Sam Kankit. Make you me look like a mug. Thanks, Sam. Robert Rohwar, 101. Just, just leave the analysis to me, Chris. <laughs> Robert Thornton's made them all look like mugs so far in this group, but he's not taking out the 101. 49. So can it for 76 for parity. 76. And these are the types of finish I've spoke about every single day this week. These are what you should be practicing religiously. And how many times have I said it? One dart at tops. When it drops low... That's a Roger real telltale Roger, sign for me. There's just a bit of tension in your arm because this man is so relaxed right now. He can't believe he missed tops. He's stepping back, disgusted at having to throw at double 10. 42. Can't find that either. Samuel Roger, can't keep returning 20. for the same double himself to get a break back. Good dart, Sam Kankert. Sam Kankert. I'll show your opponent. If I was playing that, I'd feel he doesn't really care about the game as so how I would feel. Third leg, Sam, to throw first. And if I was you, Sam, just getting Game a little on. bit of adrenaline thrown up through that body. Just try that. As you see, the proud Welsh badge, the WDF Europe Cup. I wonder what Thornton was indulging in there. Some kind of superstition or something, 16. wasn't he? Holding down. Pressing down on his little towel and his darts case there. He used to be a teddy bear, if I remember rightly, didn't he? he used to walk in. Yeah, he used to go in that top pocket as he walked on the stage, and then he put that on the uh, table. I think it was one that one of his grandchildren had given to him, and it brought him great luck. I have to say, it's really warm in the venue tonight. 96. Whether he was just keeping his hands dry. I thought you were going to say it was too hot for the teddy bear then, Glenn. <laughs> 140. Well, it's been a picnic, this group, so far for Thornton. And he's already making a move back at Sam here. It was a strange group A for Robert, wasn't it? After day one, he was still very much in contention, but he was just literally on his own in the middle of the table. No danger of dropping into group C, 100. no danger of threatening the top two. I don't think he's been at his brilliant best, but that's the benchmark he set. I think I was fairly critical, maybe unfairly critical of Sam, uh, of Chaz Barstow last night because I was expecting 60. 100, 105 every time he, you know, he had a game. So, you know, Robert's just doing what he needs to do, and maybe his strategy this week is that he's desperate to win a Saturday night. He hasn't been able to do that in five occasions, so maybe he's just beginning to peak at the right time and. Rather than throw all his good darts during the week. Yeah, don't forget Jeremy Fagg, who's going to be involved in a fight 45. to try and scrape through. Robert finished Warren, a full 76. six points clear of Robert Thornton in Group A. 16. Oh dear, oh dear. 36. Samuel Warren, 140. Oh, Mal Cummins in the balcony and he's watching all his games from today. 42. Robert Rohwire, 40. A 2 1. And the break a throw. Leg, Robert Thornton. Robert Thornton is two legs away from qualification. And you just feel there's no party without Robert Thornton this Saturday night. Already, it's just really Robert beginning Robert to look strong, isn't it? Rovers. The players who have qualified one. already, the likelihood of Robert qualifying. And Reese Robinson's put himself in a great position. It's a real pick -em. Yeah, no doubt, though, he 60. will be the main act when the curtain opens on Saturday's session here at the Motor Super Series. Usually when the acts go on stage, you say, break a leg. Well, we've seen three of those in this match already. One hundred and forty. He doesn't like it under the treble 20, but because there's so much... The centre and left hand side of that treble 20 stayed there. And like I said, it's a nice feeling when you're just floating them over. 59. He's taking control of this leg now. 50 ahead plus these. 
They're looking pretty comfortable. 140. Certainly now. Want to finish after nine. That's always the, the target, isn't it, Glenn, for top players? Remember Gary Anderson saying that? He was always disappointed if he hadn't left to finish after nine darts. 100. Robbie Drew Hoyer, 161. He was never the biggest scorer. My, a lot of my practice was from here. 201, 161, 101 downwards. and 55. Trying to do it in six darts, five darts, and four darts accordingly. Well, that's just a bit of a slip from Thornton, so Kankit will be... Annoyed not to have been able to jump on it. 82. Robert Drew 106. Yeah, there's the figure now that Sam's chances are dwindling away if he loses here. 98. Well, there are a couple of doubles that Thornton loves, and everybody knows about tops, but he often does have a secret side affair with double four. 84. Robert Drew Hoyer. About to get reacquainted. Still as hot as ever for it. And Thornton Robert now Thornton. one leg away from qualifying for finals night. Yeah, it's been a double that a lot of the players have enjoyed this week. Fifth leg, Sam, to throw first. I was Game quoted one. earlier saying, I think there's a magnet in that double force just because it's on the right eye line for right hand players as well. It's just that double 18, double four areas 60. where a lot of right handed players are. Confident. And Robert Thornton right now is absolutely flying. Just doing a very oh, solid, without spectacular job. Just over that 91 average right now. Just seems to be beating the person in front of him. Also a good result for Reese Robinson, isn't it? 45. Keeping another player four points behind him. Yeah, that game between Robinson and Fag, that first one. You just felt the winner of that game is going to kick on and... 140. You know, Reese's next game is up against Chad Bar, so I'm really interested in that game because if Chaz loses that, it is beginning to look like Thornton, Robinson and Fag very early. 100. But for me, I still think Chaz has a lot to say in this group. Sam just seems to be a dart behind the rest. He needs to really find something 81. now. 81. Yeah, Robert Thornton again. What we said in the previous leg, nine 60. darts thrown on a checkout. Robert Drew 140. And he'll try now and leave his favourite double. Well, scratch that. Think of another plan, Robert. 40. Has Sam got a plan. He's drifting in turn fives Robert Drew an awful Warren. lot, and that's a big assessment I'm seeing from Sam. And you could argue it's confident it's going to be six star to me. That's surprising, that. Very surprising. 32. Yep, I'm equally shell-shocked by those misses from Robert Thornton. Forty-five. Looking maybe to leave that double four again to feel the four-one win that would put him through. Yeah, he mustn't drift into the five this time. Being straight is good. He's going to get a dart or a double, and that dart the double is double top. And Eight. it's five-star well, Robert Thornton. Sure. Five wins out of five. And we'll be seeing the fantastic Robert Thornton here on Saturday night, mixing it with the very, very best. So Sam Kankett, you just feel he's a dart or two behind the rest of the players, and he needs something, needs that spark. Robert Thornton, very, very solid, very, very professional, excellent on the outer ring. Robert Thornton is through. And next up, the fantastic Reese Robinson against Chaz Barstow making his first appearance of the night. That's up next after this short break.
Every Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team off the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok for all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up and the action gets underway from 7.30pm. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series. And if you are coming here tomorrow night, you're going to see Robert Thornton. Six times he's played at the Super Series and six times he has qualified for Saturday night's final, courtesy of a 4-1 success against Sam Kankit before the break. Coming up next, it is Reese Robinson up against Chaz Barstow. The first time we've seen Barstow tonight, Reese Robinson with a win here. We'll move on to six. Boys, watching this one in the commentary box, here's Chris and Glenn. Yeah, thank you very much, Hitch. Reese Robinson, I thought, was absolutely fantastic to win that game with Jeremy Fagg. An awful lot on it. And he would race into a 3-0 lead before pegged back to 3-3, but showed some real quality to win that game 4-3. And you just feel he's, he can ease himself down with this game of Chaz Barca. Or the glass half full can see he can get the job done against Chaz Barca. Not worry about further games because calculations would sort of favour him. Even real potential that he's getting so close to qualify for Saturday night. But he's a tough proposition, as Chaz Barst thought his best. We didn't see his very, very best yesterday. Personally, I'd love to see him here but on Saturday night. He's, he's a great Rivers. player and would be a wonderful addition Evo. for some of the players who have qualified already. Yeah, if he does win here and gets to eight points, it will be... Well, it'd take a, a, an odd set of results to stop him 45. making it through. But if he does win as well, it, you, you might see a, a low tally of points for third place going through. It could be a real race to the bottom between 57. Messrs. Fag, Barstow and Kankit. So we'll keep our eyes on that. And Jeremy Fag could easily be beaten by Robert Thornton in the next match and then Barstow and Kankit go head to head. 60. But still only be two points separating them with half the night left to play. Yeah, Chaz Barstow's playing two of the last three games of the night. That might be key. 41. Didn't See enough consistency from Charles Barstow last night. He did have good moments, some decent enough displays, but often the spells were a leg or two rather than a match or two, and that is a contrast to what we were seeing a couple of years ago. 96. Yeah, he had that favourite position where he was playing more the Super Series Challenge Tours, and because he was doing so well in the Challenge Tour, he was playing a lot of the 60. Players' Championships as well. He had the Fantastic running, many of them, and some real fabulous averages. And I thought he was the next player to come through Q School and 100. to get his professional contract. He's doing some renovation on his home at the moment. He told me, and he said he hasn't even got a board up in the house. So I'm guessing he's relying on local league, Super League County. You can count on Reese Robinson to fiery maximums. Doing it for fun in this group. And that one leaves him a double. Take the first leg off the Winchester thrower. And he might not need to go Reece back to Hall tonight, Reese Robinson, because he might be on the stage tomorrow night with Robert Thornton. And that was a great stat from Henry Deacon Second leg to in the lead up to this match. But probably the most unsurprising stat as well, in a way, that Robert Thornton has never failed to make it through to finals night. 96. Yeah, it's a good feeling to have when you know how to do it, how to get there. But it's just the next phase now for Robert Thornton. He's desperate, and sometimes you can want something too much. 60. So he might just rein back. But the quality of the players are here tomorrow night, it's he might be still the headline act, but he might not even be favourite going into it. That's how 95. strong the field is. And I really like Dom Taylor, but he hasn't been put under a lot of pressure yet, Dom. So that's the kind of things we're going to see from him and Mike Warburton will be saying, hey, what about me? And we know the high level Scott Walters has got and he had to dig himself out of a hole after a slow first half of Group C. 
He could be very interested. I think he's got the type of game that's more cutthroat the Saturday night. 59. Must win situations for many of the games. One hundred. Throw of Reese's is looking very relaxed. Yeah, some mathematical issue there, though. Robinson starting upstairs on 306. Usually the 19s is the preferred route and the best chance of leaving a checkout. 140. Yeah, the only time I never did is when my opponent was in the 400s. You know, there was no point chasing the 170 finish, but the fact Chaz was in front, I think it was a bad decision on his part. But three. Chaz Triple three. 111. It means it's Chaz's favourite for this leg. Triple 17. He's got nowhere near the trebles there. And 55. That must just give Reese more optimism. 123. How easy is this? It doesn't get a go at the bull, not 62. to win the leg anyway. Bastard will get two 56. darts at a double of his choosing. That double is tops. And that's in tops. And that's 1 1. Good game, good game. Reese Robinson, once again, very solid around that 90 mark. Third leg Reese to throw over. Both good on the outer ring. Game on. Just the 1 180 so far between these two. I'd expect fireworks in relation to 180s in this match. 60. Yeah, Robinson, I'm still spinning at that decision to go for three tops at the time he did against Jeremy Fagg. He got away with it, Reese. 59. Robinson, a real maverick move. I think with those high vis flights, it'd be safety first from Reese Robinson. Yeah, I Not... think he's uh, yeah, he's no, I think he's bothered them off uh, Scott Walters. I ask you, Glenn, what's the most maverick thing you've ever done on a dartboard? Oh, maybe not on the dartboard. It's, I was oh, playing on the dartboard. It's, it's late, but just hey, be careful. Where are you going with this? Yeah, well, I did wear high heels. Yes, I played darts. I did an exhibition in high heels. That's about as... Uh... Okay, playing darts. 60. Get you. Well, get I'm, involved, I'm... tweeters. At MSS Darts, what is your most maverick move? This could get interesting, couldn't it? Anything clean, and we might give you a shout-out. 59. I once warmed my milk before I played as well. Say that again. I once warmed my milk before I played. 140. Sort of sack as an how boring I was, but... <laughs> just... Even his joke was boring. Yeah, exactly. 123. Reese require 140. They worked for Steve Davis. He's a DJ now as Robinson looks at treble 15. I think he liked that 18's bed because that treble 10 was covered there as well. That Reese Robinson right now, he's demonstrating all the qualities that we know he has. He's looking really good. And he's been the better player in this match. And quite deservedly. Deserves to go 2-1 up here. But we know double four goes in. The Magnet. Game shot on the third leg. Reese Still intact. And Reese Robinson's hopes of taking another step towards finals night very much intact. Fourth leg, Chaz to throw first. No Game on. maverick move from him in this one so far. All nice and solid professional performance. Yeah, that separation is looking fairly clear now if Reese can get over the line in this game. You're looking at Thornton. Reese Robinson will be probably doing the mathematics as he comes off. 94. Potentially just needs one more win. And then there's that real fight for third place. And Jeremy Fagg continues to be right in the mix there. He's been unlucky a lot this week. Can his luck change? 45. He's up next in a big game against Robert Thornton. Yeah, well, he, if he does get one more win, this man, he will be through. Ten points is going to be enough in this group. But he could be through without that win as well. 96. Depending on how other results go. Before he next plays, two more matches to come. Well, it's the first time we have a look tonight at Chaz Barstow's throwing style. Very upright, but a little bit like you said earlier, Glenn, it was a bit more of a lean on the last start than the first two. Yeah, but also, um, look how solid that elbow is. Look at it with the red mark underneath that elbow. He's not lifting above it. Now watch, now watch Chaz as it's lifting all the way to that. But the next sign, I'd really want to put that in slow-mo. 
Oh, that, now, believe it or not, the crazy four. thing was my favourite Dark of the Three, there was the last one, and that was the one that was treble five. So, technique wise, I like the last dart. Might like the last dart of this because it might be the one that nets the fish. 145. Chazerwar, 85. You feel it's a must hit. Also, it's going to need the bull. But that is just not acceptable. That's not me saying it. That's Chaz. 35. Yeah, he did not Reese like that. 25. No, 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 Reese. No bull. Just in for double four. All the players are leaving it. I was looking at the wrong score then myself. Barstow on 15. Yeah, but there, yeah, you're right. Where? He's made that choice, hasn't he? Because he's aware of that little magnet in the, in the double. Keeps hitting it. Robert Thornton keeps hitting it. Fifth leg Reese to throw first. Game on. Yeah, I felt. I think I went to bed last night and I thought, I think I was a little overcritical about Chaz Barstow tonight, but in the best possible way. It's just that it was more of a compliment. 100. What I was trying to get across because I'm a huge fan, but for whatever reason, he's not at his best at the moment. He'll know a lot more than to me if it's just been a bad couple of days or, you know, the fact he's not got a board up in the house is one of the reasons he's not where he wants to be with his game. I'm looking for these maverick moments on our social media. Come on, tweet in at MSS Darts. We want to know what you've been up to. What's the most maverick thing you've done? If our 41. social media admin is watching, I'm sure they'll tweet out the question. Ninety-six. Eighty-five. Speaking on um, those type, type of things on the hockey. Did see the video. It goes round every now and again, doesn't it? Kevin McDyne mocking Michael Van Gerwen. <sighs> yeah, that's a beauty. One hundred and Didn't end well for him. I do have a good story about Michael Van Gerwen, but it's just a little bit too long. Well, it is if he takes out 80 when he comes back, but we might have time for it in the next match. Is this the end of this match? Oh, it could well be. Double 10. And still. And Game that is and that. And it could Reece be Robinson. as good as a place at finals night for Reese Robinson. Not quite mathematically there, but as good as in truth. Chaz Barstow is going to have an awful lot of work to do. He... Still only has two points in this group. Reese Robinson, the 4-1 thumping victory over Barstow. Has moved himself on to eight and in an extremely strong position to join Robert Thornton in the Saturday session. Thornton back in action next. He faces third place, Jeremy Fagg.
Welcome back to the Moda Super Series where Reese Robinson now finds himself on eight points after a 4-1 victory against Chaz Barstow in our previous match. That now means Barstow could be at peril in terms of his qualification stakes. Next up for us, it's Jeremy Fagg up against Robert Thornton. Fagg can move on to six points of victory, whilst Robert Thornton has already secured his place into tomorrow night's final. Right, it is our middle match of the session or we're getting towards that middle point of the session here's Chris and Glenn to describe the action thank you so much Henry Robert Thornton tick job done Reese Robinson tick nearly there Jeremy Fagg now it's your opportunity the protagonists have done their main job Jeremy's been very consistent but when it's come down to that real nitty gritty game them deciders it's just come up a little bit short one good thing about Jeremy though Usually his second games is where he kicks in. Leg, Robert to throw first. Game on. Yeah, never mind that crocodile on the back of his shirt. It should be a boomerang, shouldn't it? Keeps coming back. That's for his pal coming. 60. Well, he's going home. Mal missing out. I mean, this afternoon session, the Australian was here last week as well. I know a few people might think that's a little bit 56. different, but I do get it, players making the effort from Australia to get a couple of chances in a couple of weeks after the commitment they've made. 100. Yeah, if there's one criticism maybe about the Moda Super Series early doors is that we want to see new names all the time. Not only are we seeing new names, it's going to be the most cosmopolitan field that you're ever going to see at Moda Super Series. 93. It just keeps getting bigger and better. And if you want that opportunity, I'd recommend you get to your local ADC competitions, your local vaults. Get yourself involved in the regional finals. 100. For me, that's the best route to get here because once you're here, grab your opportunity because right now the conditions are absolutely perfect and you're playing the best amateur players in the world. And we have seen some of the ADC qualifiers go on to win weeks here, go on to earn two of cards later on. 81. I think my favourite player at the Border Suits is obviously I don't go all the way back to Southampton and, you know, the era of Grey Musher, Robert Owen, etc. I really liked Adam Warner. Yeah, great story. Fantastic story. And he's got a bit about him as well. Watched him almost beat Michael Smith at a European yeah. tour recently. 60. Jeremy Require one. Not sure how Smith, and I'm sure that's a competition Smith then went on to win. It was, yep. Yeah. Treble 20 for Fag. He's certainly not burnt out. He's up for the challenge. 100. There's that frustrating. Exactly. He's, he's doing 100. that. It sags the shoulders because you don't want to just dip low. You want to go big. You want to give it an effort because it's typical of Thornton. Game shot of the first When he wants that 100 finish, not only does he finish, it's done in two darts, and that will hurt Jeremy Fags more than you can imagine. When you have Second that dart, the double, to throw first. look at them Game sunken off. shoulders, but he has to keep believing. He has to believe in the process. He's thrown lovely. There's just elements of the game he can improve on. But time is against him. Yeah, finish from Thornton, almost like he placed the darts in. Like that one. And that one. Oh, and that one, but it's 20. banged out like someone stood behind the ball at a board at a fairground with a mallet. You're not winning the teddy bear. I went to Primrose Valley recently, Scarborough. We went into 99. Bridlington, and we I went on a, a, a dark game, and I won the biggest <laughs> teddy. And the crowd, the pressure I was under, 94. a couple of people recognised me, and uh, I went on there. So, yeah, there was no mallet behind it, but I won the biggest banana you've ever seen. All the fun of the fair. 83. And you could enjoy all the fun of the throws here at the Super Series tomorrow, Saturday night. Do come and join us. See this man in action. Scan 100. that QR code right now. We are in Portsmouth. We are live. We are free, barring a small booking charge of just a couple of quid. And I'm just being shown a picture in the commentary box of Glenn Durant's big banana. 140. Fifty-seven. Jeremy Rewire. Can 48. I just add it? It's a little cold in here. <laughs> As Fag looks at forty-eight. 
can't give Thornton a sniff at this 130. Game shot of the second leg. That just shows a little bit of class there from the Aussie. He didn't panic. His shoulders were a little sunken after that first leg. But he's got some class about him as Third this Aussie. To throw for he's it. fighting. And what a story it would be if he can get here Saturday night and really get in the mix. Yeah, well, it's his fifth meeting of the week with Robert Thornton. 56. It all started with that 4-3 defeat when he was 3-0 up in that first match and caused him to catch that disease, that first match-itis that he's suffered from ever since. But he did get him back the next day with a 4-0 win. And Jeremy Fagg, when he played Robert Thornton on Wednesday, lost 4-1. Oh, and then, of course, last night was beaten again by the Thorn. That was 4-3. Not as close as anybody to Thornton. It's a great feeling when you know you've qualified, you relax, you can just see Robert Thornton's enjoying his game right at this moment. And These two aren't going to win bananas, are they, Glenn, with all these darts being rejected? It's that Timmy Mallet behind there. Thornton oh, making sure of those stuck. Eighty-one. Robert Johar, one hundred and twenty-four. You watch him at the Super Series. Ninety-two. Hasn't posted massively high averages often, Robert Thornton, but often his winning legs are, are real blitzers, aren't they? He can have a few off ones, but his opponent's not in it sometimes when he wins legs, and this is an example 59. of that. Fifty-nine. Yeah, I thought, Johar, I thought Dom Taylor was tremendous on his darts this week, and. That's one of the four tiers of Robert, Robert Thornton. Thornton. When he has the darts, he is very difficult to break. Yeah, and he is playing at a very decent level in this Portland match. Jeremy to throw Remember, it's a match that Jeremy Fagg might feel he needs he to might. win with Barstow and Kankit playing each other next. Certainly doesn't want to lose heavily and drop into a, a minus leg difference. But there you see the level that Thornton is producing, and this is after he's already 85. through. It can be easy to switch off mentally, can't it? Lose that level of concentration and engagement, but none of it from the thorn. Yeah, and, and the opposite side to that, 60. when your body relaxes, when you know you've qualified, sometimes the game can be so easy. But I think if it was, I was in that position, I'd just want to be getting back to my hotel now and starting the preparation. I always think hydration 86. is so key on a match day, a real big event like tomorrow night. I think fresh air. I was talking to Dom Till. I said, don't just lay in your bed all day, Dom. I said, go Eight for a two. big, long walk. Just make sure you drink a few pints of water as well. Put the energy in your body and come out fighting tomorrow. Can we find a bedfellow? How about another? One Three in the bed. Easy. But a little one won't roll over, I can assure you of that. I want to see a close-up of uh, Danny McNamara's 180 again. 20. His lips don't move. like a ventriloquist. He'll have a got Legia. <laughs> Look at this from Fag. Well, don't do the 180 close-up now because he's... Oh, yeah, he's, well, he's done that Dimitri move again. We mentioned it. Yeah, probably sensible in the position he's in in the leg. Close-up. Who said that? Where's Orville the Duck? Well, can Fag find 32. the finish? Can't. Robert Johar 153. <laughs> you wish you could fly. Wow. Oh, this is unbelievable. Yay, that is Robert, Robert Thornton. Leg, Robert Thornton. In one picture. An unbelievable. Jeremy Fagg must be sick as a chip right now. Two missed darts at a double. Robert Thornton at 150. That's Bit what he like does Robert to you. To Levels and timing Game equals off. greatness. And he's one of the greatest players to play darts. Yeah, just note to social media admin, clip that up after the over the duck impression, please. 60. It's nearly as bad as my nine dart. <laughs> that nine dart, I was prayed it was going to miss one, so I went into ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah. Harder than it looks. He is actually wearing Orville colours here, Jeremy Fagg, isn't he? I was, I, was, I was thinking maybe I'm going too maybe far Maybe that's here. what planted it in your mind. But Thornton here, if he can plant 
Another leg in the ledger, and this will help him do that. Then he's going to leave oh, five. Move your lips. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't move his lips. He's going to leave Fag in trouble because he's going to stay on four points, Glenn, but he's going to be on a, a minus leg difference. And Chaz Barstow and Sam Kankit playing each other next. They're going to close that gap. Unbelievable. That's a cracking game to come. I've worked it out. It's Danny McNamara shouting. It's Justin Bradshaw's voice. They're working in tandem. Well, Thornton is working. Everything's working for Robert Thornton. There we see. Oh, look at this. Both players getting involved, but that fabulous average of 104, and he could complete it in style. That's a happy accident. 20. And this is his forte. And that is how Thornton does it. Already through, but no signs of slowing down. The two-time Seniors World Champion puts on a show. Averages 103.26. Four out of four on the doubles, including that fabulous 1-5-3. That was a real statement performance ahead of Saturday's finals night from Thornton, who sees off Jeremy Fagg 4-1. He's now looking over his shoulder at Chaz Barstow and Sam Kankit, who are coming up next.
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series. We're at six of the best for Robert Thornton as he wins once again here at the Motor Super Series. Getting the better of Reese Robinson, who finds himself on eight points, but still in a good position in the group. Well, next up for us, it's Chaz Barso up against Sam Kankett, the two players at the bottom of the group. Big game for them. They're two players who wish they could fly way up to third place in the table. They can't right now, but they can keep the pressure on Jeremy Fagg. In the commentary box, here's Glenn and here's Chris. Thank you so much, Henry. There's an argument you'd think that these two players might have thought that the Group B was over and done with, especially for the guy in your picture, Sam Kanker there. He's got a real opportunity right now. This is a bigger game than they probably expected when they looked down at the timetable tonight. Chaz Barstow, just nowhere near his very best, but again, exactly the same. If you can just get up to four points with Jeremy Fagg, look at that game and a couple of... Charles Barstow for Jeremy Fagg. It's still all the permutations are there for that third place. Big guilty do you fancy for this one, Chris? Yeah, it's a difficult choice, isn't it? But you're right, and the players need to remember First they are still very much in the race. Rovers. I remember Game the one. week when we had our two commentators play in Chris Mason and Paul Nicholson, and Mason, of course, went on to win the week. I felt that Paul Nicholson didn't realise how big a chance he still had when he was in a similar position to this, and he, he should have known better having watched so many of these groups but that third place in group b sometimes it can take eight points to get through sometimes it can be as low as four if the top two race away and sam kankit has come out like he does know that that certainly is in his sights and either of these players pick up a couple of wins are going to be right in the mix absolutely chaz won this game yesterday it wasn't spectacular around about the 90 average with sam and that's when I just See, felt that Sam was maybe just a dart, but, but behind the rest of them. Like I say, he's very laxadaisical, very laid back. I would just love for him to pump his fist a little bit. Part of that Chepstow Super League team. It's absolutely supreme. I've often seen the results. Also from Nick Kenny, who puts them on social media. John Worsley, who was here at the Champions 45. Week. Part Pleasure of that team. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think they went on to win the national team event as well just the way he plays i guess but if he wants my critical eye just a little bit of something through that body three one hundred and nine so strangely like, can't get it two one eighties in it but barstow is first to a finish first to a double one. Semi required. Doesn't hit 39. the double. And Kankit now will have a go himself. Game shot on the first leg. Sam. Well, Kankit. you wouldn't think this pair were the cellar dwellers in the group, the way they've started this match. Second leg, Sam to throw first. Game on. Fifty-seven. You know, I've just realised I probably put the mockers on Chaz Barstow in this game because this would be for Dusser's tips to get up as well. Not often we say that, Chris. I know they do say that even a, a broken clock is right twice a day, and that's twice more than you are, Glenn. Yeah, hey, I did say that uh, Dom Taylor would. Win his group. I fancied Robert Thornton for the week. 97. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow night. It's uh, not one-way traffic. There's not that real big headline act. Oh, 121. Yeah, Thornton. The, the big draw, but the players that are accompanying him, all very capable. It's one of those nights where you can look at, 44. so far, all of the players and go, you know what they could win it I can make a case just need a good crowd here now 39 simply scan that QR code a small booking fee you can be make the night even extra special I'll even promise 100. you there'll be some incredible darts you're going to chuck in an autograph selfie well that's 20 quid so it's a tough one that one 46. I'll have to give him a bit more than that. <laughs> Abasto 
looking to help Glenn out with his tips here. I was looking at double top first start there. 28. Maybe he should have. Got another 180 here from Kankert. One hundred beautifully thrown down. Deserve the ton. Puts the pressure on this ninety two very aggressively. The treble seventeen. Fifty two. He's messing around 96. with a set up player. Scores a twenty eight and fifty two. Gives a chance for Kankert. Decisions on seventy six. I'm surprised you know. I know it's double double, but it looked like such a good guide. Doubles a bigger target. That was a choice, wasn't it? Does he go for the, the marker or does he go for the bigger target? He chose a former. He didn't get it. And Barstow can bounce that in off the barrel. On the second and avoided the dark completely, Barstow. but did find the bed. The 1-1. One, one. Third leg chairs to throw first. Game on. After we did see Reese Robinson, as Glenn just alluded to, go for three tops 16. earlier on. We asked you on social media, what is your most maverick move? At MSS Darts, tweeters get involved. Lewis Coates, a young darts player, he was bet that he couldn't hit three balls on a training board. And with his first three darts, he did it. He doesn't do it in my Super League team, reply to that. 140. Great young talent. Nice lad. Look at the way them darts are sitting up there. 100. He's begging for more. That's the longer dart that you see from Sam. Just off target there for Chaz. 135. Every time we see their angle, there's a score of a ton plus. Which I've probably ruined out for Sam. Well, he should hit 100 here, shouldn't he? 60. He's actually thrown very, very nice, Sam, in this match. I don't think the average is doing it justice. He's just not getting the rub of the green. 98. Well, it was a hard act to follow that brilliant performance from Robert Thornton in the previous match. But yeah, Kanki, it's one of those deceiving ones where the darts are in and around, 84. but mostly around rather 68. than in. Yeah, that's pretty much summed his Group B campaign so far. Chaz is just beginning to take control 36. of this match. Semi How many times have we said that? And someone's rewrote the story. Because that is the perfect dart for a 160 finish. That's the problem. A good guide. Whether it's in the treble or above it, he's had so many good guides and not used them. 100. Chaz Rewar. Last though back. The double 16. Game on the, the money leg. and in the lead, 2-1 to the Hampshire race, who might have a friend or two in the audience tomorrow, should he make it. Fourth leg, Sam, to throw first. Yeah, I think in this Two unique one. building, the, the acoustics of the building, a good fan base can really help a player. I remember going to, to Hull and an army of 58. people come down from Middlesbrough and they're right above me on the balcony. But what it did was it inspired a guy called Remco Van Eijen. He thought my family and friends were a little oh, bit boisterous. So sometimes it can go against you. I've gone to tournaments where I've been on my own and really enjoyed it. I remember going to Lakeside for the World Masters, just me and the wife, and I was really at ease in that competition. So it can have its positives and negatives having a big crowd behind you. Yeah, the congregation will come to the live lounge, of 36. course. It was originally a church, this place. Why the acoustics are so special. I'm Kanker here looking to alter the scoreline in this match. You usually have a mouse in a church. Don't be saying that to me. 81. Great. Unique starting venue, isn't it, Glenn? I love it. I absolutely love it. And... Count on one hand how many players have said to 41. me they've disliked the venue, they've disliked the stage. Just a little caveat to that. My nephew played recently and he brought his cousin with him and it's inspired him now. He's he's now practised two, three hours a day even with a young family. It's 
just by being here and being on that stage, he wants to play there one day. Is the place to be for amateur darts right now? And a big, big prize at the end of it. Yeah, amateur darts as Mecca. Terry Hoyer, 151. As Barstow, who's not going to take out this big finish, but he will leave a smaller finish. Quite a lot smaller as well. 31. Samir Hoyer, 143. Once again, timing is key. And Chaz, who's not at his best. But that 1-3-1 one, one there just gives him total control of this match. 57. He puts this away. Chazir Hoyer, 20. He's looking good to get him four points with Jeremy Fagg. Game shot of the fourth Puts it away, he Chaz does. Bersel. And there we see this beautiful venue in its glory. Fifth leg, Chaz, to the high ceiling. Game on. And Charles Barstow at the moment, well, he is keeping his prayers alive. Sam can kick, well, he might need to get on his knees. That really was a great camera angle, by the way. So the camera right at the back is where the, what we call the balcony, where a lot of the interviews 85. are done with players. I thought it was a great interview with Mike Warburton this week, where my co-commentator Chris Murphy... Interview. He didn't even realise he qualified. He thought he had to win his final game. That was him, by the way, not me. Just to clear that up. <laughs> so just to sort of see the shock on his face there. So Mike, if you're watching, we were screaming in comms because he missed so many missed darts to get to that third leg. We were assuming that was the reason why those darts were happening. Sixty. Yeah, fifteen. It took him to cross the line to get to the three legs. He didn't remember that was against Jeremy Fag, who. Might not make it yet. Chaz Barstow here, set to go level on points with Fag and still has him to play. In yeah. fact, in his next game, between this and that, it's a Reese Robinson, Robert Thornton showdown. A match that will see Robinson through if he can be the first 96. to beat the Thorn in this group. Yeah, I'm slightly disappointed in Sam. I just sort of said off there to Chris that, you know, we haven't spoken an awful lot about Sam. And he's got a real big opportunity Ooh, with a win is. over Chaz Barstow here. To put him on level points with Jeremy Fagg, but just seems to be slipping away. And like I said, Chaz isn't doing anything really special. But he's in total and utter control. 41. And that Chaz does him no favours. Minimum six darts, one four six. You would expect Chaz, but that first dart is making it all very difficult. 41. Still a sting in the tail yet. With a dart like that, it's perfect. 85. Chaz Hoyer 105. Options on 105. And two darts and another dart at tops. Game and job. what a finish. The highlight of the whole match was that 105 finish there from Chaz Barstow. He's done himself a real big favour. And what a showdown to come very, very soon with Chaz Barstow when he plays Jeremy, Jeremy Fagg, who's also in third place. And there's the tail of the tape there. Pretty one-sided in relation to the Hampshire man and finally beginning to show some of his successes. It's a battle at the top. Up next, it's Reese Robinson against Robert Thornton back after this short break.
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where it is halfway point here in our Group B action. It's time for some expert analysis and some very expert analysis because Dozen's tips came in, Glenn. You sound surprised. It's your first one this week. That's why I'm surprised. Shh. Don't tell everyone that. <laughs> right, we are at the halfway point of our action. We've seen a fantastic evening here at the Super Series. Let's round up what we have seen so far tonight then. Before the break, we saw Chaz Barstow get the better of San Kankit by four legs. Well, that could be a crucial one in terms of qualification, but the story is Robert Formton because he just continues to impress that last game, 103 average. Yeah, he's just doing what he needs to do in that 103. He's just stepping up as he goes along. But for me, the highlight today was that opening game, the fact that Reese Robinson got over the line against Jeremy, and now it's just all about the low-down showdown for third place, and that game between Chaz Barstow and Jeremy Fagg really really stands out. The winner for that one puts himself in a wonderful position. Most certainly. And because of what has happened, Reese Robertson is now going to go through into Saturday night's final. That is because the way the fixtures now pan out for the rest of the evening. Two players cannot catch him on eight points. So, Robertson through, Thornton also through and what sort of dent is Reece Robinson going to make into tomorrow night's final? Well Reese Robinson's got a really big A game and he's very similar to a lot of the players who have, have qualified already Scott Walters you know them guys are going to be really really dangerous and Reese Robinson now comes into that equation as well he does have a C game and that's the one thing where you know that would concern me about if I was going to be sort of tipping Reese. but if he stays consistent and that's why he should really get his head down in this game because these two could play in the the group stage tomorrow. So even though they're through, there's still a lot to play for as Robinson takes on Thornton. Glenn Dummett's going to make his way down to the commentary box to describe the action with Chris Murphy. Thanks, Henry. And you're right, it is a meeting between two players that are well able to enjoy a little bit of freedom. Both safe in the knowledge that they will be back on that stage on Saturday night for the Super Series 4. Week two finals night. Robert Thornton, it's a familiar feeling for him, has made it six on the spin at the Super Series in getting to the finale. But he can't seem to cross the line when he gets there. Time and time again, Robert Thornton seems to falter at the deep end, including final defeats on a handful of occasions. The Scotsman has won just about everything and First leg reads to He's determined to add a Moda Super on. Series title to his illustrious role of honour. Reese Robinson, though, well, we saw him try some flamboyant stuff when he was needing to win. Now he doesn't need to win. Watch out for a few maverick moves from that man. He actually looks good, Reese, and uh, like I said, he, he looks 16. quite fresh as well. and. Looks like he's had a good relaxing day and he's coming here really determined and he has put a very, very good display on. And uh, yeah, he'd be absolutely delighted, but I wouldn't go easy in this game. This is a real potential that they could meet depending on how it works out in the group stage tomorrow night. And even if they met in the semi-finals, you just want to just say, oh, you know, lay down the marker to your opponent. Yeah, first and third from Group B would go into the same group. Second place which is likely to be Reese Robinson, will join Mike Warburton in Group 1. 109. And also, it will be Scott Walters second in Group C in that group as well. 40. The 180 from Robinson, well, that's 96. been a big part of his armour, hasn't it, this week? He's a talented boy. Perfect for double eight. 12 data. The first leg. He is going to lay a marker down to Robert Thornton and secure with that second place. That's a fabulous start to it. Second leg, Robert to throw first. Game on. Just to have a chance to win the group by my mad maths, he would need to win both his games 4 0 and Robert oh, Thornton to lose both his games 4 0. Yeah, I was just working that out as well. He'd win it by one leg. I'm going to assume he's going to have second place if he wins this one. Because I'm, I'm guessing, does he want to be in 60. Robert Thornton's groove tomorrow? But then again, you know, the proposition then of playing Mike Warburton. So I don't think these players at that point. I think when it gets down to six Ooh, players, I don't think they really care. It's going to be a strong six, whatever happens. I liked your low down showdown on the balcony, Glenn. I'm going to pocket that and utilise it at a later date. Well, Henry's nicking all mine Maybe. as well and then <laughs> quibbled when I started shouting Hail Mary. <laughs> 
As long as you don't nick me over the duck, I'll be uh, okay. Well, nobody can argue with your tips this evening. Credit where it's due. Well done to your researchers. This is good from Reese Robinson. 140. And he's keeping it together. I mean, I've seen games where he's just been involved in some... 134. Well, just where his personality's let him down. Is that about the best way? I'm trying to put it as nice as possible because he deserves credit today because he's been marvellous tonight. Robert Drew I don't really want to put any dampener on it. He just stays like this. He can be super dangerous. Tops. 21. Always oh, ends up there Reese somehow, Wall, doesn't he, Robert Thornton? Reese Robinson. Looking at a couple of 57s to get there himself, but can't find them. 95. Robert Drew Right, 40. the question is, which dart? Well, it's not the first, and so now he's having to Game move, but does peg the double Thornton. 10 with a second. It's one of those players, Robert Thornton. Interesting, you talk about your, your James Wade, your Michael Smith's tops and tens, to tops and tens. But with Robert Thornton, it kind of stops on tops, Game doesn't it? No one ever talks about his double ten hitting. And like I said, sometimes I don't think I've ever watched darts as much as I have in 2023. So you start to see things. And like I say, his double ten are absolutely one solid. And what I've noticed also this week is Reese Robinson knows where the 180 bed is. Yeah, I've actually 60. lost count. Have you tallied up those? Hmm. I thought you might have just give me about 30 seconds <laughs> notice there. <laughs> oh. It's a lot. 41. That's six in one match. Yes, so only one of nine people ever to do that. I've already had two here after two legs. Robert Thorne himself. Uh, plenty of history on his side. He had 103 average himself in the previous match, but Reese Robinson threatening to upstage him here with a 106. The arm looks 100. very relaxed. I thought it was just a little bit jabby when Jeremy Fagg was fighting back in that first game, but you just have a little look at Reese's release. You're looking for it to be right, smooth. So think of a boxer. You don't want to see that jab. You don't want to see that little punch at that point. You just want to see the full extension of the arm. 60. And I think that looks a real delight. Right, look what he's left here, 120. Earlier on tonight, tried three tops. 85. Raise your wire one. If you get to this time, I'm going to sing the four tops. Respect to Thornton, me thinks. 60. It, is it, in a way, it's Robert even more mad, isn't it, that he tried it when he was still very much in the fight and then didn't go for it once he's already through. The crazy thing he might not have even thinking about. Sometimes when you get to the hockey, you do some silly things. 43. Let's just say that. But requires 60. straight 20s in order first. Do you have to move? He does. So it's the left-hand side of that tops. The, the, the left-hand side is exactly Robinson. what he hits. The obligatory fist pump. I'm really liking what I'm seeing. It's quite a mature performance Fort from Reese Robinson. And a mature couple of days. Yeah. And that hasn't always been said about the Humberside man. It's with some of the scoring and the finishing from the players, you know, 60. that have made it through to finals. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put it out there that we might not be... Far away from getting our first finals night nine data. Just look. And that's what I'm searching for in my throw again. I know what's wrong. I'm a bigger 16. jabber than Roberto Duran. Just what I'm searching for is just this release. So I'm frightened to throw a dart at that point. Just look how relaxed that arm is. Well, never mind the nine data on finals oh, night. We might get it on Friday night. Reese Robinson has thrown back to back 180s and now wants 141 for Reece the Moore, perfect leg of darts. He's been superlative. He's been wonderful. He's been very 51. mature. And after nine darts, he wants 90. We'll get excited in the comms box. It just looked likely. That's why I said it about tomorrow. It's just looking likely. Reese Moore, 90. A few players when it. Starting to hit the big scores and the big finishers. Might, might stay there. 25 for tops. And I'm telling you what he's thinking there, Chris. It's such a good marker that it's more likely to go in the bull. 
And I will say it for the fourth time Thank in you. this leg alone, very mature. They seem to have got it out of his system. I know it's a little cheesy. 50. Or is your reward? Oh, hey, damn. Robinson. Game shot Tins tops. Like Robinson. This is a, a brilliant performance. Akin to the one that Thornton produced in his previous match. It was actually that display from Thornton Didn't that did Reese Robinson a favour because in beating Fag, it stopped enough players being able to catch him and put him through. Quite simply, it's Gouda darts. 45. That wasn't great, to be honest. One hundred. Well, Glenn has been lavishing purple pros on this throw of Reese Robinson. Now, the only thing I don't like, look at the kicker of his hand. 85. His hand is actually pointing to Danny, the referee, at the end. Something I can't notice on the front and something he needs to get out of if that's something that's coming to a slow. So just have a look at the fingers at the finished product. Now, that was better. His worst ones. Can you see how the finger yeah. was put? That's he wants to get out of that, and that would tell me why it was such a fat 19 there. Good That's spot. what I called the kicker. Good spot indeed, because we saw the first start was kind of perfect, kind of swanned the hand, didn't it? 140. Yeah. But Thornton, though, producing a little bit of a fight back here. Oh, well, that was perfect from Robinson. Oh, did you see the snarl, by the way, when he hit the 180 a couple Love of visits it. ago? Now he wants double 13. In oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Dozen dark leg for the Thorn to keep himself in this fight. We have been spoilt with Group B this week. It's been absolutely sensational. Six leg Robert two and these two have first. been the headline acts and they haven't disappointed in this fantastic game. Robert Thorn once again round about the 90 mark, but building. Rhys Robinson has been round about that 100 mark throughout. 140. Yeah, brilliant stuff. And it's the maximums once again. Six in a match yesterday. He might do it again, you know. 60. He's going to get the chance to. Robert Thornton himself in his previous match had that brilliant 103 average and four out of four on the doubles. Rhys Robinson's three out of three in this one. Fifty-seven. Dare I say the best I've seen Reese Robinson since 2019. Have a close look at his stats before tomorrow night. One hundred. I'm liking what I'm seeing. No waving the arms about, no sulking, just getting on with the job. With also just a little bit of magic in between. Robert Thornton will be proud of this unbeaten record. He will not want to let it slip. Double ten. One hundred and thirty. Never gives up. Never gives in. Even when all is already signed and sealed, Robert Thornton could have... Ninety-four. Just Robert sneak in his pocket, put in his kebab order, and let Reese Robinson reel it off. But you'll have none of that from him. He hasn't got a quit in him, has he? Eight. Yeah, tenacity, real battling Reese qualities. And he went for the three tops on 120. But I think he's shown an awful lot of respect to Robert Thornton. Yeah, I thought he might stay there. Looked like a good guy. You can see it was. He ended up hitting a 140 to leave double five in the end. Thornton on double one, in double one. And we do have a last leg decider to a match that more than merits it. Seventh and final leg, Reese to throw first. Game on. The times they've played local league, one leg of darts, 5 0 1. That's what I was thinking at 3 3. Pretending I'm in my local dog and duck. 60. Try not to think of the occasion. Just pretend you're playing your mates. 100. Advantage, Thornton. 100 now, like a cricketer, the first dart was like a slow ball. The second one just had a real bit of oomph in it. 82. It's like a tennis match, this one, from one to the other. 
What a perfect dart that is from Reese Robinson. He'd be disappointed with that. 83. Still looking to repeat that feat of six of the best. We'll get one more go at it in his next visit. Robert Thornton himself, though, looking to show him how it's done. With his second of the match, that's seven one eighties in total in this brilliant affair. And Robert Thornton, remember, has not lost a game of darts in this group. Eighty four. Robert Jaguar one hundred and thirty nine. Come on, Bobby Boy, you say, isn't that last dart? Just Reason gives him a two dart and makes him a big favourite because this is an outside chance only. And all he can do now is lay it up. Six out of six so far for Robert Thornton. Robert Is it the lucky seven out of seven? Because this has been a fabulous match. A first class match. 38. And it might be a first defeat. Robert Thornton missing a couple of darts for seventh heaven. And now Reese Robinson looking to get the win. On, and that's what he's done. And, and you can see both Reece players are through. Robinson. But he still really wanted to beat Robert Thornton there. Maybe just a little bit of bragging rights, a little bit of a mental advantage if they do meet at finals night. But the performance probably deserved the victory in truth. 98.14 the average. Four out of five on the doubles and five 180s that's 11 across two matches for reese robinson if you add his six from a game yesterday thought and got two himself both players are through and we are now going to focus on that battle for third place as jeremy fag takes on chas barstow next <laughs>
Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where Robert Thornton has finally been defeated but had to take one heck of a performance from Reese Robertson to do so. Four, three, five maxes, four out of five on the doubles. He had a bit of emotion there as he came off the stage at the picture. I don't think he knew he was through up until the end of that particular game there. So play with that kind of intensity. Thornton, by virtue of the win, by, uh, by virtue sorry, of the scoreline means he goes on to win the group. Uh, next up for us is Barstow up against Fag. This is all about the battle for third place and this is being watched by Glenn and Chris. Yeah, thank you so much, Henry. I was wondering why he shouted out so loud in that one there, but that answers the question that Reef Robinson wasn't 100% sure that he'd already qualified and uh, I just thought he was laying the marker down in preparation of potentially playing Robert Thornton tomorrow. Well, we have questioned his counting at times, Glenn. Maybe he needs to sharpen up on that more just off the dartboard as well. Yeah, it's telling me he's also just focusing on the dartboard in the practice area and not looking at the TV screen that's up there. But Jeremy Fagg was involved in a really important first game of the day where he just comes shy against Reese Robinson. Reese Robinson then kicked on and will be there Saturday night. Rovers. This game is game massive. Are we... Going to surmise that it is basically between these two players. One of them will get to six points 93. here. Sam Kankit could get there with two wins, but he has a huge leg difference to overturn at minus 11. You have to fancy Jeremy Fagg to win his last game against Sam Kankit. 58. But I still would stick my neck out. I mean, Chaz barcelona has got the tougher last game, so it's not over. But I do think... Mm. Like well, I said, it's the... Does that make it a bigger game for Barstow than it is for Fag? I think so, because you can't guarantee anything against Robert Thornton. And Robert Thornton will, won't want to finish on two losses, so he'll be given everything. If, buts and maybes. 100. And it's just another reminder as well that Fag finds himself in this position. We saw it from Lee Cox last week as well. That it's no guarantee that if you're a top player in Group A that you'll get through Group B, even though you think it would be easier. Three from five go through. Statistically harder to go out than to go through. Yeah, but Mike Warburton's watching this and absolutely delighted he had that extra leg on the board. 60. Not having to put himself Denver through this. Well, that maximum from Chaz, his only three-figure score, might be followed by another one. Had all the time in the world there, which is why he no, went that route. Five. Often you'll see a player start on the ball on one three five, but Barstow's got his wits about him and he's come out to play. Eighty-one. Chaz, you require forty. Game Chaz Barso, that's Chaz come up the blocks Barso. this time. We haven't really seen the best of him. Is he just beginning to peak now at the right time? Because that was a big one against Sam Kanker to set Stroker's. up this game. Game on. He doesn't really want to go into that match with Robert Thornton as a must-win. Yeah, thirteen dart leg from Barstow. All he had in it was a one eighty, really, but. It was more than enough. Yeah, you get to this stage now where you start looking at legs difference as well and a big win here for Barstow. Good. Big connotations in result for this third place. It's a huge separation now between Thornton and Robinson. They're long gone. Yeah, he's only two behind Jeremy Fagg in terms of leg difference, isn't he, Barstow? So if he even wins it by one leg, he takes one off Jeremy and puts one on his own and they're level in that department. 46. I've just noticed that from the practice room, it's next door to us. You don't always hear it, but the, the levels have gone up in there. And I think it's because we've got two very happy players basically celebrating that they're in finals night in Robert and Reese. Yeah, I try not to get eye contact with any of the guys in there. I don't want to be looking to give any favouritism, but I felt like putting my arm around Sam Kankady. He looks like. 58. Yeah, he looked pretty dejected and. Just hasn't worked for him. It was a tough group, but I just still fancied Sam to do really well. He's a top notch player, but I think he'll find it tough to come out against Reese next. But how's Reese going to perform? No, he's through now. Once again, if buts and maybes. Yeah, just the one win to his name in the group. 60. Jeremy it was actually Warren the very first match of the group against this man. Real losing streak since then. Five on the spin. Jeremy Fagg has lost both of his matches Third tonight. And, and Really will be determined to end that trend. Six. 
60. Jeremy Rewire, 40. Look at one. 1-1. One, one. This match is very much in the balance. And third place is very much in the balance also. The couldn't day. be Jeremy tighter Rewire. right now. Who are we going to see there Saturday night? All square. And again, just goes back to the point we made right at the start of the evening when Chaz Barstow, in such a stylish first leg, came out of the blocks. Well, never mind like the fastest dog. He was the hare, wasn't he, in this match? But then just disappears the very next leg. Yeah, it's sustaining. It's a, that's why you've got to admire the, the real elite of the game, the way they can average 110 plus over a best of 21 leg match. That's the, the big thing with these top eight guys right now. But over these short sprints, you are watching the best amateurs 29. out there. With the biggest prize that there is. Yeah, I know Jeremy Fag here representing. ADC Australia, and by the way, there is Open Series this weekend for the ADC. Open winners do win a spot of the Super Series, and it's also a a beginning of the the new women's ADC circuit. One hundred and thirty. Top eight will play their finals here at the Live Lines. Now there is a little bit of a, an issue with the scoreboard, Glenn. So we'll just uh, talk about what's happening, because Jeremy Fagg and Chaz Barso, are, are they involved in a straight shootout here, or do you think there are more twists and turns to come? Well, the answer was going to be a yes, until I realised that, you know, Jeremy's got Sam Kankett in his last game, so it still gives him options there, because Sam looks a, a dejected figure next door, and uh, Chaz has got Robert Thornton, so it's, it's not everything on this match, but as far as these two are concerned, you You've got to make them favour. An even big win for here for Chaz Bass, though. Then we're looking at legs difference as well. So it's just one of them. I mean, it's just typical Group B. 58. Yeah, I know what you're all wondering then. Fruit pastels is the answer. I thought they were looking at my belly. <laughs> <laughs> the only problem was sat in this seat. It's a little bit close to the camera 59. for my liking. You can only breathe in for so long in the comms box. You're taking away my excuse. Vasto in pole position in leg three, having won leg one, and then gone missing in leg two. Yeah, it's all about having the dart at the moment. It's flattered to deceive this match so far. 96. Just feels like it's a bit of shadow boxing between them. And then we're going to see a knockout blow when it goes down the final leg. Just has that feeling right now. Ninety. Jazz require eighty. So triple eighteen. Single is okay. Another single is okay, and the bullseye would be sublime. Sixty-one. Jeremy require one hundred. Like will need to find a treble with one of his first two darts. Yeah, that's the beauty of one-two four to finish with fancy, but that one doesn't show frustration, which is credit to him. Forty. We'd be disappointed with that. And Chaz Barcelona's probably done this thousands of times. And when you need it most, Games on the third he produces. Chaz it hasn't been spectacular game from Chaz Barcelona tonight, but he's just that type of player. A very Mike Gillett, a very Danny Lowby, where they haven't been the best Hold in the group phase. But come Saturday Game night, they do the real spectacular. Is Chaz Barstow making his move? I did say it could be the danger. It also just seems to be going with darts right now. 81. Here we're having a look at the how the darts are sitting. Just a little bit of an angle there, so you may have to move across the hockey to get to the left-hand side of that treble 20, but he decides instead of that to go downstairs. 100. He's still through at the left-hand side. Went too far in the end. That for Basso. He might try and aim down the V of that flight. Sometimes you can 59. look at a dart, can't you, Glenn, as a marker and just feel like you've actually made the treble bigger. Yeah, just pretend that's a fence and just pop it over. Definitely for people who sort of caress 49. the dart. You get some really big players as well, yet they throw so softly. 
Well, you get a Whitlock and he just powers through the flights. Okay. Oh, Have a bit of this, he says, to the two previous pieces of tungsten that are in the board. Quite interested in the starting position of Chaz Barstow's darts. When you watch it in his hand, he's actually pointing away. It's not straight in line with the target. Just have 16. a look at this when we see him pull the first dart back. You see that? It's yeah. pointing right over. Very upright as well. I'd like to see a little bit more elevation in that throw, but... 60. They're the kind of things Very I like to work with people just to make sure that they're getting the optimum from their throw. One point in it, but it's a big point. 1-6-1, a much, much harder finish than a one six zero. but Jeremy Fagg is making a meal of this. 22. That could be a real turning point. Chaz Basso will feel he's got six darts in this one six one. Now it's about purely set up. I wouldn't stay there personally. He has, and that's why. He liked that light. Oh, 130, that sir. Is sensational. Jeremy require 138. Remember that moment, because it's going to take the Della. Advantage Barst on it. He looked at that first dart, Chaz. Now it's about preparation. Now he's thinking. Eight now he's visualising. Chaz require 24. He goes off the same process. The little slant of the dart, as Chris alluded to. There's his marker. Surely kisses off that barrel. No oh. score. Well, that is so, so close. You could e Jeremy even hear a collective 52. sort of sigh from the practice room next door. They've all thrown darts like that before. Can't believe it wasn't in. And typical of a game of darts. The three close darts by Barstow. Game His opponent the with the two dart Jeremy combination. Craig. Slots it straight in the middle. No eye contact between them. So it was a good opportunity there for Jezza just to look at Chaz, just to see to what the reaction is from them, because on. Chaz will be hurting after that. I'd be thinking I should be 3-1. A really good place can put that to one side and start with a big score, but it's trebleless. All of a sudden, this match spins on its head, and a big return here from Fag, and he becomes favourite. A reminder of our final three matches, Sam Kanki, who still has to play Ooh, twice G2. and can still... Make it through himself, but it's a big ask. He takes on Reese Robinson already through. Thornton, the man at the top of the table, also no, through. Faces Chaz three. Barstow in the penultimate match of the night. And then the curtain closer features Fag and Kankit. So it could well go right down to the death in this group for that third and final spot. 96. If I thought Group C was tight, this final spot in in Group B. Just swinging around the like oh, swing on the from conservative to labor. What a perfect first start, complemented with that beautiful oh, one in the second. A bit of a flyer with a third that would have really put him in pole position. And Chaz is now finding that treble 20 bed just at the right time. 140. Well, he was here in the leg before. He put himself in such a good position. Ended up losing it after three fabulous starts that just didn't go in. 140. Jazzy Roir, 83. Now it's the battle of these two tough finishers. Bullseye. 35. Just lacked a bit of composure for me. Jeremy Never looked Roir, like going 98. in that. Well, Jamie it... Fagg hurt him with a 52 last time. Yeah, if it's not Barstow's day, then this will go in, won't it? And that's the feeling you'll get. Maybe it is his day. Yeah, Fag's having his chances. Jazzy Roir, 48. Big moments in this match. Huge dart pending. Game yeah, great finish from Barstow, who leads by one and is one away. And the way he took that out suggested to me that he didn't care which double Six he went for. To throw first. Game on. What I also noticed there is how much does Chaz Barstow want this? He hadn't really demonstrated to me the desire, but the scream when that double 16 went in hey, tells me won. everything. I think he knows it's a must win in a sense that he's got the tougher last game out the two of them. And all he can do is his job. Yeah, he's be angry at that because that was plum. Oh, yeah, Timmy was behind the board again, wasn't he? He's after my banana. <laughs> oh, 
Well, Fag is going to have to find 60. something here. He will have another game to play. Remember, it is against Sam Kankit. It could all turn around again in the last couple of matches. Oh, but Charles Barstow oh, is the one nice. that is taking the ball by the horns. Just speaking of that quickly, that ADC in Bridlington, have you seen the setup? The photos? Are yeah, yeah. Looks great. 59. It's professional amateur, isn't it? I think that's the mantra. That's the aim. That's the ethos. What the ADC is striving for. 92. Professional darts at amateur level. Well, this has been pretty professional from Chaz Barstow. He's really turned on the style when he's needed to. Chaz, your horror 112. And a 1-1-2 one, one, would seal the deal. Oh, great dart. Look at that. It's in. 80. You'd be delighted just to look over to see that Jeremy Fagg is on 2-0-4 so he can prepare himself to win the match with darts at double 16. 96. Chaz, Bo Chaz Bass after 12 darts for the match. No score. Never look confident with any of them. Jeremy Ruhoire, We're all just a little bit tetchy. Do or die for Jeremy Fagg in this match. I don't know about that. Had 90 left. He may go the ball now, but mate, why not just go the, the treble 20 with a second 25. dart when you block the first one? doesn't matter which double you throw at, does it? As long as you get a go at a double. And it's mission accomplished for Chaz Bass. There was a big match play game between the two of them for this fight for third place. It's not over yet. There's still some plenty of work to be done for Chaz Bass, though. Professional, if not spectacular, for Jeremy Fagg, his woes and his frustrations continue. But Chaz Barstow, that gets the six points. He takes pole position for that third place. As we move on, it's final games coming up. It's Reese Robinson against Sam Kankett up next.
Welcome back to the Moto Super Series. We're in the battle for the bronze. Chaz Barso has got the better of Jeremy Fag by four legs to two. So next up for us here upon the stage at the live lounge, Sam Kankit up against Rusos. And Kankit can still harbour hopes of progressing his way through, but he's going to have to win both his matches and hope for a leg swing. He takes on Reese Robinson, who is already at Saturday night's finale here in Portsmouth. I'm watching this one in the commentary box. Here's Glenn and Chris. Yeah, thank you so much, Henry. We've just been number crunching a little bit. And to say that Sam Kangan is a big outsider still is a bit of an understatement. But he, he can still be done. Even a big 4 0 win here. He's still relying on other results. I think it's been quite disappointing. Like I said, I walked through the players' area and he looked the one that was a little bit dejected. It hasn't gone well after a quite promising start. He's winning his first game yesterday. He's been on a losing streak since, whereas Reese Robinson is absolutely buzzing. Absolutely delighted. And First leg, Sam, to that roar first. of delight when he beat Robert Thornton, Amo. when he realised he was through to Saturday night. And that's the first phase of the job done. Now it's to get there tomorrow night and make it mission accomplished. 23. Yeah, by, by my maths, Sam Kankit can... Only afford to lose 85. one leg now. That's in both of his matches. So if he loses two legs in this one, we'll try and get it confirmed. But I think he is done. 85. If two legs go the way of Reese Robinson. One hundred and forty. Just feel like the hors d'oeuvre with the main courses to come. It's still not over and done with. Robert Thornton can do Jeremy Fagg a big favour by beating Chaz next. And then Jeremy playing Sam last game. He'd be confident of a big win in that. But it's far from over yet. Seven. Spraying them around. Very kind, Reese. And no awareness, really, of the score there from Sam Kankit. 55. 19s might have been a better route. And in that position in a leg, and Reese is following suit. 96 92 57 Samuel Hoare 112 80. Reese your 116. Let's travel 19. He's covered the bed there. That's the brilliant dart for tops. 76. I can't even tell you how good that Samuel second dart was. For Kankert, this has to go. Game it does go. Leg, Sam well, Kankert. you never know. You just never know. Incredible things can happen in sports. Incredible comebacks. And he... He's needing one. Second leg Reese to throw first. Game on. He's only got a leg to play with. A leg to play with for the last three matches, but who knows? 140. Yeah, if he were to win this one 4-2, and then Barstow lost 4-0 to Thornton, then Kankit won 4-0 against Fag, he would get level. In all metrics with Chaz Barstow, but because Barstow has beaten him twice, he would win on the head to head record. That would be a finish. It just goes to show how important your your matches are against rivals. It's not just points and, and leg difference. Win your mini battles. Yeah, Reese looking good. 65. He just becomes a big player now tomorrow night. And already his mind will just get off this final game and get back to the hotel and start his preparation years. then. Reese your 156. Well, both of these players, I think the one criticism that I would have is the counting. Sam Kankit is on one of those positions now where he has to think about it. 262. 
Uh, needs to come across to the 18s. Does this time. Oh, That's a good example of having his awareness correct. It's not always math. Sometimes it's just awareness. 25 taken off. So treble 18 would leave tops. The fact he's taking his time, I thought it was a finish he knew all about, unless what? he was thinking bull 19 bull. I think that's exactly what he was thinking, and that's why having missed the bull, he then had to work it out. 63. He's just in one of the moods right now, isn't he? Great dart. This could be top, tops, tops. 94. Reese require 56. Two darts, a double 18. And the way he's playing, you have to fancy it. And that means that Sam Kankit's feet are planted firmly now on the tungsten trapdoor. If Robinson wins another Robinson leg, he'll fall through it. First. Game on. Just like Uncle Albert. Eighty-five. At times he's trickled into that five after the treble twenty. It must be something that's frustrating him. But Reese's throw looks. Effortless right now. If he does watch back easy. when you are super calm, Reese, when you haven't got that tension, when you're not throwing your arms about, when you're not being petulant, I promise you, Reese, you look a million dollars. Well, he has been the star of tonight, hasn't he? This is his last outing. He's looking to go through the card, having inflicted the first defeat on the group of Robert Thornton. 58. I mentioned his uncle, Rowley. When he used to come down with a tea said Yeah. He's his best mate and his uncle, and he could throw 96. a mean dart. That was when I used to run the Teesside Ranking events, and then I heard about this prestigious talent in the Humberside area. There was another guy as well, someone might correct me on social media, Leon Bailey. Leon, he, ab he absolutely dominated the youth round about a certain period, and he was from Humberside as well. 57. I might have got his surname wrong, but I think Justin in my ears. Part of our production team has confirmed that was right. He was a fabulous player. Whatever happened to him? 82. Yeah, so many have been and gone. Uh, plenty of flashes, but not many stayers in the world of darts. And you have to tip your hat to anyone who does hang around. 92. But Sam Kankit might not be hanging around much longer in terms of his bid to make it through to finals night. Too good. We know what double four means. 53. Samuel require 100 and force field around it this time and it allows Kankit an opportunity to keep the flickering flame burning 98 Reese require sayonara to Sam Kankit game shot of the third revoir, leg, Sam. Robinson you can see he just looks a dejected figure it's not nice to see players like I probably came full of hope and expectation on Portland Wednesday night when he arrived here in Portsmouth. Game on. Started off really nicely yesterday, but it's just been a just been really tough since and sometimes you've just got to go back and just reflect and just move on and plan again because he'd be looking forward to going to Ireland next year representing his beloved Wales. Yeah, well this is heading for a sixth straight defeat for Sam Kanker and he's going to have to come and play again. In a match that could mean something for his opponent, so that could be even tougher for him. But you've got to look at that first match of the night, you know, when Reese Robinson raced into a 3 0 lead against Jeremy Fagg. You said how important that could be. It's resulted in Reese Robinson carrying on, riding that wave, and, and Jeremy Fagg has fallen 30. away. He could end up missing out. Yeah, could have been very easily Jeremy Fagg winning that game 4 3 and him kicking on. A lot of these players are. Who are mid range between 85 to 95 average. They're all good front runners. But what I'm seeing with Reese now is just effortlessly throwing a dart. There's no difficulty in doing it. What's oh, really hard about darts is trying to do that in the most intense pressure. But the game is there. Well, a perfect dart followed by something oh, rather erroneous there for Reese Robinson. But he does correct it. It's going to be treble 19 on 139. Reese Rewire 139. Well, started on the bullies. Trying a few tricks now, isn't he? 89. Sam Rewire 118. And there's a trick that could be right in front of him if he if he wants to be tempted. 
Can Sam Kankit take away that temptation? Yes, he can. Sam Kankit. 1 1 8. Lovely finish from Kankit. And nice to see as well that he's still got that interest mentally in the match. And I'm just thinking as he relaxed his body, does he know about the two dart, the two leg rule that he had going into this game? But it's typical that when everything's over, you produce your best finish of the week. 100. And starts nicer with that ton. Just think the mentality for Reese right now. Just get up there, win your games. Never mind, bull. 100. Double 19, treble 19, double 16. Get up there and do it properly. This is where you have good people in your corner, Chris. It's really important. Hey, good management, cool. good family around you. And no, I don't want to take away all this, this maverick role that he has, but he's got so far in his career. The 60. talent that he's got, he can go further. So what he needs to be doing there is just demolish Sam 4-1, get off and get back to the hotel and come tomorrow. No one's going to remember the bull, 100. 19 bull. Oh, am I being boring? Tell me. Sorry, what were you saying, Glenn? I just uh, drifted off for a second there. I said, I wish I could fly way up in the sky, but I can't. Yeah, well, Reese, probably, you know, I think it is something that people like to watch, but you're coming at it from a player's perspective, 96. aren't you? And it can, let, let's put it this way, it can be a, a distraction that results in destruction. But I'm thinking, where's his mentality when he's thinking that? That's what. 81. Sammy, I don't, I don't think you'd see Gerwin Price do it. It might be an extreme example of the point I'm trying to get across as he looks at this 1 2 1. Double 18. Oh, 1 1 8. Sam 1 2 1. Sam Kankert, where have you been? Yeah, fabulous. Fabulous finishing from Sam Kankert. His best check out of the week, followed Broker. by his best check out of the week. Game on. Yes, Sam. Where has it been? Love it. Absolutely love that reaction. That's a little bit of personality from Sam. He's looked a little dour, a little sad. Express yourself up there. Give a little fist pump like Reese would do. Well, that's one of the frustrating things about this game, isn't it? All of you decent players can hit 180s, can hit big checkouts, but... When you just when it goes missing for spells, you just do wonder what's happened. Where's it gone? One hundred and forty. Can't remember where I put it. Some people that's a one leg. Try eighteen months. I've been told you're playing better than you let it on, Glenn. One hundred and twenty-eight. Here he comes again. Not just the finishers. You can do the maximums as well, you know. Twenty-six. And that is a little bit of a disaster there for Reese Robinson because he hasn't left to finish. Who do you make favourite tomorrow night then, Chris? Well, hang on a minute. He might not leave a finish either. Twenty-five. Incredible. 26, 25. Well, it's a big question, Glenn. I'm going to need... I know, but I'm going to be asked it soon. And I, think I, I think I need your help. You want my advice? I think I need your help. A few people have gone wrong asking for my advice. Don't worry about that. I still... I really feel hey, Robert Thornton is... He's due one. I think he's kind of due one. And I thought that was boring. 3-3. Three, three. Reese Robinson. Well, what about Reese Robinson? If he... Absolutely. If he hits those 180s like he has been... In this group, then he's going to give himself chances. Finally... It's just whether he decides to uh, try and be flamboyant at the end of legs or whether he just takes care of business. Well, Rowley, if you're listening, tell him it's business tomorrow. Big prizes. 95. Keep the flamboyant for another time. Regards, Glenn Durant. Here's another one. one just like the other ones. Easy. I mean, we wouldn't mind a bit of flamboyant fireworks now, would we? 60. I quite look forward to a nice cup of coffee tomorrow and do a little bit of preparation for the final. And one of the stats I'm looking forward to, how many 180s he's put away this week. I mean, this 60. is the reduced group, Group B, with only five players in it. Yeah, I was keeping a tally chart, but my pen ran out of ink. That was after his first game. 60. <laughs> He really has been fantastic with his heavy scoring in this match alone. 
91. Typical of Robinson. Look what he's left. Yeah, we've seen. All about hundreds for Sam Kankit, but Reese Robinson having the full repertoire of big scores. And now he Reece wants the biggest finish. Perfect. Another one of them. Oh, he's been so good on that double 18. You have to say it. The writing's on the wall. 60. Razor War 36. Yeah, brilliant stuff. This is to go through the night unbeaten. Game show. Reese Robinson, Robinson has enjoyed sweet success this evening. Fabulous stuff from him. He's heading through to finals night. Sam Kankit will have one more match to fulfill, but he won't be there. But it's a perfect night for Reese Robinson. Beat Robert Thornton, the league leader, a little earlier. And now he's joined him on 12 points as he signs off with a 4 3 win over Kankit. Thornton in action next. It's the battle between Barstow and Fag over the next two games. Third place will be decided, so do stay with us here at the Modus Super Series. Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where Reese Robinson has completed the card unbeaten after getting the better of Sam Kankit in a last leg decider by four legs to three. He's going to sign off against Jeremy Fagg in our final game of the evening. He's very much involved in the battle for third place, as is Chaz Barstow. He's in action now against Robert Thornton. Situation is simple as far as he's concerned. Win and he is in. He claims that final spot in tomorrow night's final. Watching this one from the commentary box, Chris and Glenn. Yeah, simple in terms of the mathematics for Chaz Barstow. He knows the job he has to do, but not simple. 
in terms of the opponent because the Thorn has been in form in this group and will be tough to topple. And the Prince get rid of the King of Seniors darts with a victory that would put him through to finals night. First or will he falter and then Game on. leave it all down to the last match and Jeremy Fagg's final chance. Glenn Durant, at the start of the night, made the point that the first he, he match could up. be the most important. Jeremy Fagg lost it to Reese Robinson, 4-3, and it might mean that he might not have a chance when it comes to his final game. 134. Like I said, if I was Robert Thornton, I was doing my homework. I think I'd want to get rid of Chaz Barso from tomorrow night. and I'll be treating this as important as ever because Chaz is one of them players who can be absolutely dynamite on any given day. A bit of a Sophie's choice, though, isn't it, Glenn? You get rid of Barstow and you let Fag in, and you could end up then him beating you, and you're wondering would it have been better if Barstow went through? But all of the players all only care about winning their own games. That's all they think about. And Robert will be playing either Barstow or Fag because they will be in the same group tomorrow. 100. Yeah, Reese Robinson has. Finished second in the group, 12 points and a plus two leg difference, such has been Robert Thornton's dominance of this group, 12 points and a plus 14 leg difference at the moment. You know, you asked the question earlier about Reese Robinson and his wacky ways, and you said, would Gerwin Price do it? Well, I'll tell you who wouldn't do it, Robert Thornton. Game shot of the first leg, Robert Old Thornton. Old school. Yeah, predictable. Steel and solidarity, and that is exactly what we saw there Second with that 80 checkout. Game on. Even though he loves tops, he didn't fancy it twice. 130. Well, both have come flying out the traps. This is by far the, the Chaz Barstow we've been waiting for for Robert Thornton. Just a nice 14 data to open proceedings here. There's another subplot here as well. If Chaz Barstow does get beaten, he, he needs to avoid being beaten heavily because there's only two legs between him and Jeremy Fagg. Now, if Barstow is beaten by more than a leg, then Fagg will just need to win. It won't matter about the scoreline. Yeah, I was just doing those calculations myself. 84. I mean, very early, Chaz is well over the under average. Telling me he's putting everything into this game, but... The most damning statistic is that he's 1-0 down. 99. What a last start that was. Brilliant first start from his opponent. Not a bad second. Oh, and how's the third? That's how good it is. Easy. And the 120 lead Barstow had was... Just taking his time. 70 left. Oh, He'll take the 15. It's not... He's a two dart and one three seven. I was going to say, he's going, to, he's going to end up going top stops after yeah. I said that in the previous leg then. I mean, one three seven. the top stops is the way to go these days now. 77. Big moments for Chaz Barstow. Chaz Rohar, 55. And haven't been overly confident when he's had this type of What's situation. What's he doing? What on earth is he doing? He's got it completely wrong. A complete mental meltdown there. 55 left he had, and for some reason he's fought 56. And he's gone for the 16. That was an intentional throw at that target. That is an enormous error. Can he put it right? 39 remaining. Double 10. All's well that ends well. He gets away with it. Wow. That is absolutely unbelievable. I'd love to know Robert if he qualifies his thoughts, what Game happened on. there, because it felt like it was mid -throw. I think he realised what he'd done mid-throw. Yeah, because he, at least he stopped and had the chance to he work out. He could have so. easily then thrown at double top, couldn't he, thinking he was taking it out and busted his score. Could have been an awful lot worse for Chaz. He caught himself in the act. One hundred and four. But again, my thought process there is sometimes all that tension and nerves that's going through your body... Is removed, it's eradicated because of the laughter that you've got of what you've done there. 78. And that double 10 just crept in as well. You could hear the sigh from Jeremy Fagg. You think for Chaz Barstow here, yes, if he wins, he knows he's through. But if he loses, he's probably going to assume that he's out, isn't he? Because 
he would expect Fag to beat Kankit. 47. Yeah, absolutely. This is the kind of match he's going to have tomorrow night if he qualifies. This is a real do-or-die game. It's a, a win or bust. You can't rely on oh, Sam Kanker doing you a favour. You've got to get up there and do it. Because, you know, going into tomorrow, this was the real blockbuster game between these two. Having said that, by the way, about Kanker, he did play pretty well in his last match against Reese Robinson, 1-1-8 and a 1-2-1. So who knows what will happen in the last one. Well, Barstow just wants to get it done here and make the last match not matter. Exactly. 94. We'll get off in that case, shall we, Glenn? 59. Right, Chaz 70, Chaz. 70. Just have a good look at it before you throw. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he wants. 50. But he hasn't got it. Robert Rohwire one. I would normally say not too much of a panic as one sixty is a big ask. But when it's Robert Thornton, you feel it's a fifty fifty chance. One hundred and forty. Even the commentators sink in their chairs. twenty. Just felt like it might be going. It's that double ten again that bailed Barstow out in the previous leg. Now double five. On the third leg. He takes Chaz the lead. Barstow. He breaks the throw and he's two legs away. From a return here at finals night tomorrow. I think that double five was real quality there. He was very aggressive and got the rewards from that. But that double top miss there from Thornton. What an important moment. And once again, you have to feel the Jeremy Fag in the background. He may not have known an awful lot about Chaz Barstow. He does now. 60. Yeah, we, do, we have used that, that pun a few times about whether Jeremy 96. might be burnt out, but it has seemed to be evident tonight. Yes, he's been the butt of many of your jokes. 96. Is it a fag end <laughs> will be the headline? 140. This is absolutely... Outstanding from Chaz Barstow. Single dart average 35, 105, 79. 45. Yeah, that's, all, 85. that's all Fag needed, wasn't it? Just to watch Barstow roll up and put in a performance like this. Double 10. 65. Yes, I wouldn't be backing him in this situation. Double 10 again. You needed to go all the way down to double five last time. 79. And there's the focus. Just as look what he's doing there. 20. The preparation while Robert Thornton is throwing them darts. Game and that the is the execution. So important. When you're not throwing a dart, it's a huge part of the game of darts. And it's he just pre prepared throws. really, really well there. Got Come into on. a zone. Walked to the rocky. Never took his eyes off that double ten. This is a sparkling performance. 60. And Chaz Barstow, in fairness, could actually end up having a better night than Robert Thornton, the, the group winner. He could win three from his four, with Thornton winning just 92. half of his matches. You can't argue with that. You can't argue with the top three. 100. Yeah, penny for the thoughts for Jeremy Fag. When you go back to Wednesday, just one leg away after 15 matches. Yeah, and that was six points above Robert Thornton. It was one leg between him and Mike Warburton. One leg won. And, and don't forget that the pair of them played in the decisive match in that group. Fag actually won it. But the fact that Warburton got to three, missing 14 darts to get to three, by the way, and the drama... Has just unfolded. And it is cruel, but we've seen it a couple of times. So I mention it again. Sorry if you're watching, Lee, but Lee Cox has suffered that fate multiple times. That is begging for more. 123. Why has it gone in treble one? He asks it. Chas Barca, 226. He wants it on the 20s throughout this. He's just already working out his plan. 95. Robert Rohr, 
42. Well, he might yet. Chaz Reward 130. Win the leg here. Chaz Barstow looking to beat Thornton and fend off Fag. 91. Robert Reward 91. All skill Thornton's big fat 16 for the bull. He has to move, but it wasn't a bad marker there. 45. He could have kissed off that. Piece of tongue, so, but what a moment 40. this is for Chaz Basso. A game he had to win, and he does Got win in an unbelievable virtuoso performance there from Chaz Basto. The Chaz Basto we know all about, and he saved his very, very best to last. Absolutely outstanding 100.89 in the circumstances that match was all about. For Robert Thornton, he'll go on. And they will be playing each other tomorrow as well. But Chaz Barsuch's job done. You have to feel for Jeremy Fagg. And he will be finishing off Group B up next against Sam Kankert. Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where Chaz Barstow has secured his place into tomorrow night's final after getting the better of Robert Thornton. So that means Jeremy Fagg has now been eliminated from the competition. He takes on Sam Kankett. This is to round off both players' campaign and to round off our Group B coverage for the evening. In the culture box, Glenn and Chris. Yeah, thank you so much, Henry. Yeah, it just wasn't to be for Jeremy Fagg, but... He had the opportunities this week. You have to feel for him. That group uh, demise, the one-leg defeat, he took it really well. I think he was quite confident that there was still another gate to go. But that group B has just been a step too far from them. You look, go back to yesterday, those 4-3 losses early doors. First leg, That's come back to really haunt him against Sam Kankett in his opening Emo. game. He beat Chaz Barstow 4-3. 
And then another 4-3 loss to Robert Thornton, and they just come back to really hurt him. No so it's been the odd what? leg here and there for Jeremy Fagg, but I'm sure he's learnt an awful lot about his game, and we'll kick on from here. Well, how much do you think those first match defeats have cost him? Because we, we, we signalled out the first match tonight 60. as potentially a pivotal one between himself and Reese Robinson. Robinson's actually ended up using that as a springboard to win all of his matches, and it could result in Fag losing all of his matches. Yeah, I mean, oh, I go back to Monday morning. Five. He's playing Robert Thornton. I don't know an awful lot about Jeremy Fag. I've, you know, done my research on him, but, you know, when you actually see them playing and he's straining up against Robert Thornton, you think, this is interesting. The Super Series has unearthed another talent from the Oceanic region. And it just sort of went wrong. And in the end, it just became a oh, real bizarre statistic. And every day his first game he lost. And, and like I say, many of them games have had that 4-3 scoreline. So we do indeed have our Jeremy Super 6 for Super Saturday. Jeremy Fagg, though, looking to sign off in style here. Can he find the big finish? Not quite. One hundred and twenty. Yes, he's done it once this week. But it's just a a real air of after the Lord Mayor's show this match. I'm sure the pair of them just want to get this over and done with. And Jeremy require forty five. Double sixteen. He 13. will be back. Incredible amount oh, of times that Sam's hit the treble 20 then got into that 32. five bed. And a lot of the players will look back and Jeremy Fagg. Jeremy Fagg not interested in that. It just pings that double 16 with real aplomb, real authority. Second leg Sam to throw first. Game on. And the groups for Saturday confirm. We know the position of all of the players in this group. Brennan Henry will go through it in more 100. detail at the end of the show, but quickly Mike Warburton. Reese Robinson and Scott Walters in one group. Chaz Barstow, Tom Taylor, and Robert Thornton. 119. In the other. That group two is that is <laughs> that is quality of the highest degree. 100. Well, of the six, go on. One hundred. You asked me earlier. I said Robert Thornton. Where's your fifty pence? I did say Dom Taylor uh, from when you 60. asked me the question on Monday morning, but that is just a horrendous group he's involved in there. I'm just interested to see if you give me the same answer you give Henry at the end of the show, and whether you still say the same thing yes. tomorrow because it looks I could change. so interesting. Do you know, Scott Walters keeps looking at me as well. It's just one of them ones. Is he, but... Where is he? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to Ooh, stick with what I said Monday morning. I said Dom Taylor, so. But that's a horrific group to be involved in. But I guess you don't play one of them players in the semi-finals as a, a glass half full answer. Yeah, you've got to expect to beat anybody on a finals night. Jeremy Fagg would have felt like he could have been there. So close. 95. Jeremy Rohan, 130. Midweek Blues when he lost by a leg. Mike Warburton winning that fight. Despite Fag winning the match. 90. Yeah, they're not going on till Monday, so I, I hope they're here tomorrow night. They've been supporting each other as Kanka looks at 103. Double 16. 71. Jeremy Rohan, Yeah, Mal, the other Aussie that Glenn's referring to there. It's coming home. Help or hindrance? Well, he hasn't moved. He thinks he can no find a way from there. Samuel Wire, 32. I think them three darts just typify his week here. So near, yet so far. 24. Just so far, I think. Jeremy Wire, for those. 40. He just wants to get off that stage In now. And, leg, Jeremy Fair. Yeah, it's a tough watch for Sam Kanker, but sometimes a bad experience makes you stronger. It makes you get back to practice and Third leg, Jeremy to work on where you want to be. You know, he wants to, a day like Reese Robinson has because he has the talent. You know, I just look at his averages on a weekly basis when 
you know, mainly, mainly from that Chepso Super League team that he's in, and he's clearly very happy amongst them people there, regularly averaging 30. Just have to then produce that on the bigger stage. 97. I remember going to a, a couple of games, and I go back to a Phil Taylor exhibition as we look at this angle again. And every time we come to that, there's always a minimum of a ton scored. 100. I remember going to a Phil Taylor exhibition, and honestly, Chris, in 16 legs of dart, his lowest score was a 140. And that just made me want to go back and play dart and practice hard. And maybe for Sam Kanker, he's seen what the levels are here at the Motor Super Series, and he's going to have to knuckle down. It doesn't come easy. 55. Back on the 19s for the 269. No, trying to ensure he scores at least 99, but that won't happen after a wayward one. So Fag is free and easy, or rather three and easy for him, if he does convert this 206 in the next couple of visits, which, you know what, I think he might. 138. Fantastic darts from Jeremy, and it's typical how comfortably you can win a match when you're playing for nothing, really. Jeremy playing for nothing more than pride. Well, he would have probably earmarked this match and thought he might still be able to get through with a win. Game it's not the case. He's done everything he can, but it's... Well, the one against Barstow turned out to be basically a straight fight. And Barstow won that one. Shoulders slumped, but he is producing a decent display here, Jeremy Fagg. One hundred. Credit to him for carrying on, staying as mentally engaged. It would be easy just to 36. throw the darts with little care, but he's re remained fully focused. And he's basically just reminded Chaz Barstow that he did indeed need to beat Robert Thornton. 125. You're quiet, Glenn. 134. Jeremy Roy, 170. Okay, I'll call in the 170 myself. Not going to happen, but he's going to leave it very handy. 134. So to end in style, the man from down 54. under who came to the Super Series Jeremy missed out Roy, on winning Group A by a single leg. Game Finishes shot. with and a 4-0 win, Fag. but sadly, for Jeremy Fagg, even that is not enough. The damage had been done, despite a great display there. 93.94, the average 40% on the checkouts as well. A high of 68. Tam Kangit, well, his race was run a long time ago, but Jeremy Fagg could not quite make it. It's Barstow, Robinson and Thornton who go through. And analysing all the action is Glenn Durant. He is upstairs with Henry. So, yes, our Super Series is now known, and we now have the Super Analysis of Glenn Durant to talk about what we've seen this evening. Let's begin with Robert Thornton. Is he just peaking at the right time, do you feel? It's, it's interesting. I've just come through the players' area there, and him and Reese have been arguing about who finished top there. So just finishing top was really important to them. Um, but he did what he needed to do, and, you know, obviously when he'd qualified, you know, sometimes the adrenaline stops flying through a little bit. But it was job done. He finished top, and he has to be happy with that because that was a tough group B. Well, this is how the table rounded up in the end. Reese Robertson level on points at Fordson, but it was a superior legs difference that won it in the end for the form. But as for Reese Robertson, perfect night from his perspective, going through the card unbeaten. 
a big smile on his face down there. He, he, very happy. Momentum's a real word in data we all talk about, and he takes that into tomorrow night. He comes a dangerous commodity. He's a very, very good player with a wonderful A game. Chaz Barso was the other player to progress his way through. Got there in the end, probably the right way to go about but it. But saved his best till the end. So, what, you know, the, the point for Chaz, now he can go into tomorrow with that massive average, that big win at the end over Robert Thornton. And he's going to be in his group as well tomorrow. So, job done for Chaz Barso. Thoughts on Jeremy Fagg, huge commiserations to him tonight. I hope he comes here tomorrow night. Both him and Mal have been here all week. So, I hope they come and experience what tonight about. Self-reflection's a really important thing in darts. I noticed Mal was watching his games earlier. Jeremy, no doubt, will get back and look at his positives and negatives, but the experience of coming over, sampling, I'm sure the pair of them will want more. So we know who's going to be playing tomorrow night, but who's going to play who? These are the groups for tomorrow night's affairs. It's amazing to think, all those days ago, Mike Warburton qualified and we're going to see him back on Saturday. And that's the problem with the group here, winners. Sometimes you do forget about them. So Mike will be probably sat in his hotel room where we're not talking about him as much. But look at that group too. That's naughty. That's naughty. Can you try and decipher that group too? Yeah, I've said Dom Taylor all week. I'm not going to change your mind. But Scott Walters, I don't know why. There's just something about that name sticking out. But there's one from six and you could make a... A real case for all six of them. Men in blazers tomorrow night? Absolutely, I've got mine, that's for sure. Whether it fits me or not, not so sure. Well, you'll have to join us to find out the answer to that, as well as the darts, of course. It's the finals of week two here at Series 4 at the Super Series. As far as the fall's concerned, well, it's a Super 6 as far as he's concerned, qualifying for finals night. See you tomorrow.